Jay Sharma, Director of Creative Writing Modern Age, along with the founder and mentor, Mrs. Rachna Chakraborty, co-host Ms. Sachini Surya Bandara, and the entire team of Creative Writing Modern Age welcome you all to this workshop on speaking and listening skills. As our motto is to spread the light of knowledge and spread awareness of one's talent, which can bring us change to the world, we organize such events. Now tell me, such renowned educationists, poets, global speakers, and corporate trainers all in one platform? Isn't it something great? Surely it is. Yes, my dear yes, students, right. it's ended a great privilege to listen to their views on speaking and listening skills, which are indeed the soft skills required to bridge the gap between minds and stay confident. We have students uh, joining in from different parts of India and soon, you know, we'll have students joining in from abroad. But now due to time constraints, we couldn't wait, but we had to do this program. And um, now let me just tell you that listening is an attitude of the heart, a genuine desire uh, to be another which both attracts and heals. So when you listen to our keynote speakers and the special guests, uh, you will feel the impact of this line, you know, the line which I said. I would now request my co-host from Sri Lanka, the bilingual poet and multifaceted director of author affairs, creative writing, modern age, to start the event after the introductory video with our very first activity. So everybody should know what is creative writing, modern age, what are the things we are doing. So over to you, dear Sachini. All right, so good evening, good morning, everyone. So uh, this is the Creative Writing Modern Age Summer Camp for all the students across the globe. And we have amazing guests as well today. So as the Authors Affairs Director of Creative Writing Modern Age, I would like to welcome each one of you to our session today. So let's hear the message from our founder. Yeah, hello everyone. Uh, Sachini, I think I'll speak towards the end. Your are okay. towards the end. Okay. So uh, let's begin with the first activity 
of the today's session. So uh, this is actually about prompt thinking. So I'll share the video because uh, there are so many rules for you as well. Okay. So uh, this activity is for everyone. So as the start, we thought that this should be a little fun. And also we want everyone to get involved to this session. So we thought it's good if we can give you to write two adjectives to describe yourself. So you can uh, send it to the chat section. Uh, but the thing is, these adjectives should start from the same letter which starts your name. So, for example, it's given funny Fiona and mesmerizing Monjoy like that. You can give so many adjectives. So you've got two minutes and your time starts now. So we have many adjectives coming in. Sachini, brilliant, bright, kind, pushbu, then adorable. And a lot of, I think our guests, you know, they should also participate. Rajput, sir. Already participated. Okay. Just okay. See. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. It's a request that we need all our guest speakers yeah, yeah. as I, well as guests of honor. Novel. Please do join. Probably yes. I, was, I was the fourth or fifth one. <laughs> yeah. Fifth one. So amazing, you know, amazing adjectives are coming up. So it's so nice when we realize our own potentialities and describe ourselves in one adjective, one or two adjectives. So that's something great, you know. Sachini, I hope you are having a look at it. Akshita, artful Akshita. Okay. But Akshita. still we have a little more time left. Yes. So I would like to request everyone to join in. You know, in the meantime, we could have played some music, Sachini. Yes. Yes. I thought it might disturb our little ones. So. Thinking. Okay, thinking. Pa, no, you know. Yeah. Music is the rhythm of life. You play music, our thinking skill enhances. Yes. But the time. Gracious and grateful grant. Yes, sir. Perfect. Now the time is over. Perfect. <laughs> Okay, Sachini. So we'll have a look at all the adjectives soon. Yes. So our speakers will be soon joining in. Uh, we begin with our first guest of honor, Sachini. So yes, we'll ma'am. So we will uh, announce the winners at the end of the session. So we can when... for our guests. Okay, we can start. So our first guest of honor is Professor Dr. P. K. Rajput. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So Dr. P. K. Rajput, sir, he is from Ahmedabad and he needs no introduction, you know. So uh, students will be very happy to know that he's such an inspirational, towering icon leading the corporate sector, be it in the managerial leadership field 
or in the educational arena, guiding students, professionals, or in events across the globe. You know, when he just agreed to be in our program, I was just overwhelmed. Our whole team, we were just happy because he is the one who inspires students a lot, you know. Now also, I think looking at him, you can very nicely make out that he is surely a role model. His PhD and 12 honorary doctorate degrees and innumerable achievements are a proof of his versatility. I may have to take the entire session if I speak about his achievements, but I would like to acclaim his role as a global ambassador, Commonwealth of Commonwealth Entrepreneurs Club, United Kingdom and Global Vice President of Global Educators Forum and the series of national awards. Now, if I will, I would just like to mention a few. So like his professional achievements, he had a very successfully, uh, he had very successfully handled the domestic business and international business of Cadillac Pharmaceuticals on Indian multinational leading pharmaceutical companies. And during his tenure, he had handled various responsibilities. So he's a life member of Leaders Excellence at Harvard Square in Cambridge. And he completed 27 certification courses from all leading international universities. And you know, the list goes on. I think so, we'll have to keep a separate session for you because you will motivate our children, I think. So, you know, um, being in the corporate sector as a trainer, besides being a global speaker, international mentor and author, I would like you to speak on this topic, benefits of public speaking on personal and professional growth. Thank I think you, that is okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Very, very good morning. Once again to Grant, sir. I can see Wilma, madam here. Hi. Good morning to you. Hello. Hi. Yeah. Good morning. And, and good evening as well as good afternoon to all the wonderful senior people who have joined here and all the lovely children, lovely students, the lovely stars which are joined here because I always say you are the twinkling star, you are the future for the entire universe. So I feel very happy and ignited when I am there in front of all of you because I start resonating myself that I'm also like a small kid playing with you, talking with you, right? And also enjoying the old nostalgic thing which were there when I was a small kid. So that is the way I love the kids very much. Thank you so much, uh, uh, my sister. Uh, I feel very happy and with the proud, I can say to uh, Dr. Manjuri Sharma, my sister. And uh, I feel very happy that you have invited me. Thank you, Dr. Rashina Chakravarti, madam, for inviting me here. And of course, uh, uh, one of the favorite person, Sachini, madam, who has moderated it from Sri Lanka. I can see Dr. Anjum Qureshi, madam, also. And so many wonderful people who are there as a senior elder to be a part of this wonderful and beautiful journey. So the topic which you have given to me, it is a wonderful topic. Let me tell you. Why I say the wonderful topic? It is, this is, this is very near to my heart. Because you will agree with me that communication is one thing which when we take birth from the mother's womb, we start communicating. When the child cries, it's a communication. So everybody understand, oh my God, a new new baby has come, right? So there are lots of the happiness enjoyments. So from there, the communication word will start. And then after the thing, over the journey, then we start learning what to communicate, how to communicate, which way to communicate, what are the right words to be used and how to ensure that when we have traveled the journey of ours as a complete lifetime, what we are leaving to this wonderful world that is being remembered with our right way of communicating the things. So that is very important. That is very important for any and every person. Either it is on my stage or either it is the children's stage or either on a very, very senior person's stage. <clears throat> now coming to the important point, because I remember one of the quotes of Mr. Ivan Esar. Mr. Ivan Esar is an American, he was an American humorist, right? He is known for his humorous writing and for compiling collection of the jokes, quotes, quotes, so many things. So what he said about it, public speaking is an art of diluting a two-minute idea with a two-hour vocabulary. Once again, I repeat it, public speaking is the art of diluting a two-minute idea with a two-hour vocabulary. 
what a beautiful way he spoke about his written about the public speaking and that is true also because public speaking is one thing which ensures the importance of clear and conscious conscious communication which is very important and concise communication then how to improve our pronunciation fluency and vocabulary through the practice because it is not there that we keep on learning the things. Yes, we keep on learning the things every time, every day, when we meet the educators, when we meet the peer group, when we meet not many people, personalities, we try to understand how beautifully they speak about it. Then we start grabbing the things. The benefit of effective communication is in professional and as well in the student life. Why I say? Because once today you are the student, tomorrow you are going to be a professional and if you will have a good communication power, right, you can make the lot of changes which is really required. Because people, they love to listen to you because they want to grasp the thing from you. So this is another thing. Another thing is for the verbal communication, the skills which is really included, confidence and asking the question before speaking. So I spoke to uh, my sister Manjoy Sharma, what are the things I have to spoke? I, I'll be speaking here on this wonderful platform. She guided me. These are the things are there. So that I was very clear. So that since I am aware about the thing, what I am going to speak, what are the things are there. So automatically the confidence comes in our mind. And so that we can keep on talking about the thing which is required. Now, my dear children, you will be thinking that why this wonderful uh, course has been designed here under the leadership of CWMA. What is the benefit of public speaking on the personal growth? And also, personal means as a children, as a child, when you are going to grow, and when you are going to become an adult, and when you join somewhere or you become a professional, what are the benefits are there? So I like to say about it that public speaking is an act, is an act actually, right, of delivering a speech or a presentation to a live audience. Live audience is either you guys are online or either it may be offline also. So it is a beautiful act which has to be ensured. And when you go and see some drama, when you go and see some beautiful film, you like to listen to the person whose communication is very strong, to the point, concise. And that is the beauty of the public speaking. It can be a formal or it can be informal event also. And it can be delivered in a variety of the settings, including the such type of school meetings, conferences, classroom and public forums. And at the same time, let me tell you, public speaking also aims to inform, persuade, inspire or entertain the audience. And it can be an important skill for the people in a wide range of different professions. So that is the beauty of the public speaking. And that is really required because with this beautiful way of public speaking, you can win the entire world because your thoughts will be positive. Your thinking will be there. You will be goal-oriented. Lot many things are there in that. And at the same time, I also like to highlight it here that why public speaking is important for the variety of the reasons. First, I told you why public speaking, then why it is important for the variety of reasons. I like to speak here. Because when you are going to be a public speaker, or when you are going to communicate the things, it can help you to relate to your audience. Today, I'm able to see such a wonderful audience in front of me. So I will be able to gain your trust because I want to speak or I will be speaking the thing which you really want to listen from me and you want to understand from me. And it can be useful for me as well. And apart from your personal growth, it is also going to motivate all the people and inspire all of them to their best of their capacity, capability, which is very important. Additionally, public speaking can help to build our confidence level because we know, we all are aware, as a student you are aware, that when you are standing in the class, when you are talking to your other student peer group, you have that lot of confidence. And when the lot of confidence is there, the, the communication will be like a floating river which is there. There's a beautiful way we can speak the thing because effective, effective communication is a skill in many areas of the life. And public speaking can play a very, very important role in developing and honing all these important skills which is there. So now, as a student, as a student, what is the beautiful benefit which we can get? It? Believe you me, I can say that today is in this era, 
the students are very lucky very lucky why because you are having such a wonderful teachers right you can understand the things there you are also on, already having the technology with you and at the same time you have the practical experience also and you can also learn in the many ways so what are the benefits which you as a student will be getting with a good communication the first important benefit let me tell you it is of improving your academic performance ultimately you are a student what you want to do it you want to be academically doing very well i am not saying that everybody should become a science graduate or a arts graduate or say whatever the academic part which you have chosen it is going to help you because it's going to give you a clear notion confidence and you'll be able to collaborate with it it is also going to improve your communication in skills that is conscious language concise language conscious and concise so you will not take here and there the words consider using a right tone the positivity of the tone tone is very important right when we talk about the communication part we say that 7% is a verbal communication and 33% is the tone remaining is your body language so this is a very important thing then in this communication it comes as a active listening because communication and listening they both go hand in hand you have to listen what the other person is speaking to you maybe some people may not be interested they must be thinking my god what the person is talking about it so you have to grab the attention of such wonderful people so that nobody should be going just like that you have to ensure that you are the leader you are the superhero and everybody should listen and that's why the chosen word at the right time at the right place is very important then paying attention to your audience because when you are a public speaker or when you are in the class you have 30 student 40 student or number of student you should ensure that whatever the topic the subject your teacher has given to you it should go to the last student sitting on the last bench and and the intensity should be same on the as compared to the first student who is sitting on the first bench to the last student that is the way you can be a good public speaker because your communication will be there across the classroom and same thing when we talk in the professional language you should open your eyes see the thing and you should communicate so that everybody should be attentive and should be listening because you are talking the what the thing which is important and at the same time public speaking also increase your critical thinking why is it critical thinking suppose if you are talking something like that and in between you want to cut the joke or you want to cherish the entire group right and somebody has asked a question in between then your critical thinking will immediately shoot it up and you will be able to give the right answer because it is going to energize the entire group either in the school or either in the professional world you can also have the planning for the future development because when you start speaking communicating listening and all you know that what are the good things are there what are your strengths are there and how and how the strengths can be further built up wherever there is an opportunity to build your gaps you will start working because you start enjoying the public speaking and once you start enjoying the public speaking believe you me you can be outbound across wherever it is there it is one of the greatest blessing which god has given to us but the people they feel shy the student they feel shy to be a good public speaker but i request all the student here please do the practice to become a good speaker and when i say this thing i did the practice same practice how let me tell you there is one another hidden reason is there your best friend is your mirror right i repeat the thing your best friend is your mirror when nobody is there in the room right or somebody or you go to the washroom and all you have the mirror take one phrase one stanza one of the paragraph and speak in front of the mirror as that you are a tv news reader i repeat stand in front of the mirror and speak with the fluency that you are a tv news reader and today we are very blessed that our sister dr manjoy sharma is herself is a great tv news reader of the entire northeast so you can learn the different pauses and the ways of speaking on the public that is the beauty of it and believe you me i have also learned in the same way so i was i used to think that i am a news reader i am reading with the pauses with the fluctuation with the passion which is basically required then 
when you have a good public speaking, you can also have the writing skills. Because whatever the thoughts comes in your mind, the right words will be taken care and then you can write the thing. It is going to improve our writing skills as well. It also helps us to encourage our audience because every time when you speak so well in the class or wherever it is, in the subject and all, the audience will love to invite you because you are adding a lot of encouragement, inspiration, positivity in the entire group. So that is other very important point of a good speaker. Then better listening skills, why I said about it. With this, you will be more attentive. Your all the areas will be open. Your eyes will be open. Your ears will be open. Your sensory organs will be open because it is going to give you that what is happening, what not is happening. And then you start blending all the things together and then you will be able to respond to things the way it is required. Now, now, feedback is very, very important. So whenever you are on the platform, you must be having two or three good friends of yours, right? who are not keep on praising you, but they will be giving you a very transparent feedback, not a candid feedback. There's a difference between candid, candid is keep on pulling the person, transparent is that as a good friend, they will be telling you that, yes, these are the things which you did it extremely well. And this, if you would have taken it, it would have been the best. So today you are good. Next time you are going to be the best. That's why we say good, better, best. Right? So I'm not talking about the better because you're already on the public speaking portfolio. Then overall, it can help all of your students to excel academically because again, communication is required. Good writing skills are required. Understanding is required. Critical thinking is required. And it will allow you to better express your feeling. In, in most of the science section, when you go for a viva, when you go for the practical, the examiner, when if he or she comes to you, when you are able to explain it in a very, very nice way, not in a critical way, the examiner gets so happy. My God, this is the student who has done a wonderful job because what the good thing you have done, you are able to tell to the person, to the examiner, and then you know that you get 100 out of 100 marks in your practical. That is the way that is that should go on. And people will appreciate, your teacher will appreciate that what a great student is there in my class. And you are going to be a future leader. So the benefits, now I'll talk about the benefits of the public speaking. Before I should talk about uh, that, how to improve the verbal communication. Two more things I'll be talking. <coughs> the benefits of public speaking on the professional goal. This I told, told you about your the student part. Now, after the age, when you will be crossing 19, 20, 25 years of the age, you are going to be a professional. Either you will be a job seeker or either you are going to be a job giver. Either way, either way. But how it is going to help you, which is very important. So the four things are very common. Critical thinking is common when you are a student and when you are a professional. Though both will. Building confidence is again common because it is you have started it when you are in the school itself. So when you will be a professional, your confidence will be bubbling in a positive way, not negative way. You will talk positive, you will talk, you will talk sense, your words will be very concise, consciousness will be there in that, and whatever you will communicate, it will be like a beautiful orchestra. Why? The people love to listen to that beautiful orchestra, that the music will be there, and people will love to listen from you, and then advancing your career. So career part is again common when a student because you understand that what you want to become in your life and as a professional also, you understand what you want to achieve in the life. So four things are common. Apart from this, it is also going to help you to strengthen your critical thinking because when you are a good communicator, then the critical thinking, creativity, both C and C, critical thinking and creativity become a part and parcel of your thinking habit. So, and then it is going to grow further. It also helps you to drive your personal development. Because when in public speaker, when you be there on the stage, you know that you are a hero, you are a queen, you are a prince, you are a princess. So how a prince and the princess, they dress up themselves, you like to be a showstopper, right? That is the beauty of a good communicator. When you go on the stage, you like to see that everybody should be mesmerized with your dressing sense, with your communication, with your talk, with your walk, which is very important. You will be able to meet the new people as well because the arena of the life says that everybody will like to love to meet such a great people personality because they want to learn from you. And then 
people will be able to market you. People will say, oh my God, let me go and meet this great person, this great personality, because I will be able to learn something and you will be a giver part. Right, you will keep on giving the thing because you have taken the things in abundance, and now is the right time for you to distribute to others because then they should start shining. And when you will do this thing, you are going to create a positive influence not only in your profession but not only in your city across the world because people will start respecting you that what a great personality has come, and this personality can really make a difference. Last point I like to say that how to improve your verbal communication. So here, understand your group of the student, understand your audience. As, as, a, as, a, as a school person, you know that which subject you're going to speak, how the teacher has guided you, and what are the important points which you are speaking. So understand your subject and your audience both. This is point number one. Think before you're speaking. Right, because the words which comes from your mouth, it will be noted by all of them. And if you are talking and you're speaking, if you're speaking, not talking, sorry, if you're speaking the right word at the right time, at the right place, this will be taken as a gospel truth that yes, you have taken the right thing. Then the third is be mindful of your tone. Your tone should not be very abrasive, abrasive. It has to be assertive. You may be aggressive because the speaker has to be aggressive. Then only people will be able to attract this, the other audience. But no aggression, please. Assertiveness with aggression is the real way of putting the things in, in a proper way. Pay attention to your body language. The body language, because you know, God has given us all the cells in them. Our cells should reflect the positivity. People should be attracted towards you. Your body language should be there that yes, you are there in every person's mind, right? You should make such a wonderful, uh, of uh, the, the image of yours, the people will say that, oh my God, I am like this, I am like this. What a beautiful way of understanding the things. Always ensure active listening, which I already told you about it. Then speak with the confidence, right? Speak with the total confidence. And for speaking with the confidence, as a student, do the practice. Practice makes the person perfect. So if you start doing the practice, and I told you in front of the mirror, go to the washroom, go to the bedroom, go to the study room and lock it and take 15 minutes or 20 minutes of your time and be like a news reader. Believe you me, if you will do one month now, I can assure you that you can beat many of the senior person like us also. And then, then practice the skills. The Once you are clear, practice the thing. How to speak, what are the way, how to smile, where to stop, what to pause how the fluctuation of the words has to be there, which is the best way of putting the things. Then in the last, as a student, gain the feedback from your teachers. Your teachers are your best mentors. They are not your teachers. They are much above than the teachers. They are your mentors. So the mentor is going to coach you, guide you. That's wonderful. You are doing a wonderful job. And very good. Keep it up. These are the areas that are there. Please take it up. And next time when I'm inviting you, please ensure that you should be again rocking, right? That you be a rock star. So again, I remember one of the uh, wordings of uh, Mr. Oliver Wendell, which is the American physician, physician because I am basically from a pharmaceutical company, right? And he was a poet and ethicist. What he said about it, speak clearly if you speak at all. Speak clearly if you speak at all. Don't jumble the things together, right? Carve every word before you left it fall. That's why I said to think, think before you speak. So carve every word before it falls from your mouth. And then once it falls, people will say, oh my God, the stars are coming up. Let us start collecting the beautiful stars. So this is this is all from my side on the public speaking and listening. That, that is all from my side. I'm ready for the questions. And the, the wonderful, wonderful uh, angels I can see here, the wonderful young minds I can see here, so I want to reply them if any of their questions are there, along with all the wonderful senior people to whom I always respect. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for your enlightening speech. And surely we'll move ahead with the questions. We'll keep uh, a kind of interactive session, but towards the end, because I think Vilma, ma'am, she'll be leaving us soon. And, um, you know, sir, I loved that line. 
a two minute speech to a two hour event. And that is the art of public speaking. I thought that I'll say, I'll speak that line only. So we public speakers are just like that. So how to pull that two minute speech? So sir, I think our children are really motivated. And uh, so to motivate change, influence the decisions and progress in life, we need public speaking skills, of course. So in fact, a good speaker is a great, great leader. And you are an example of a leader, a leader who has emotional intelligence, empathy, so uh, it's like, you know, in all the international webinars, your deep expertise, empathy and valuable wisdom makes you a spokesperson for your organization. And we'll come up to such questions later on. But uh, thank you, sir, once again. So now we move ahead with our keynote speaker. And um, our first keynote speaker is Wilma Dalus Barbosa, ma'am, from Brazil. So welcome, ma'am, to our platform. It's an honor to have such an international English teacher, communication skill coach, a mentor of English grammar and vocabulary who helps her students to communicate effectively in real world situations. A great speaker and a master trainer's words of wisdom will follow right now. And you know, children, as the workshop is on speaking and listening skills, we shall focus on how to speak with clarity and confidence, taking turns and staying on the topic like uh, just now Rajput sir said. In today's competitive world, we need to communicate with this medium of English, which is not only writing, but listening and speaking as well. And not to forget reading, of course. So, Vilma um, ma'am? is going to focus on voice modulation, gestures, and overcoming stage fear, which if formed from an early age, will definitely make y'all achievers in the long run. And the topic given to Vilma Ma'am is significance of speaking and listening skills in literature. So may I request you, Ma'am, to begin your deliberation. Hello, everyone. Hi. It's a great, great pleasure being here. I'm truly delighted to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. And today we're talking about some skills that I do love talking about, listening and speaking skills. May I share my screen, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, dear. Okay. So... I'm Vilma Barbosa from Brazil, and I am the founder of Believe in You Online English School. And the topic we are talking today is exactly what I work with my students every day. The importance of speaking with confidence and communicating. So I will be giving you some tips on how to do that. Speaking skill, this is the most important skill when we are learning a new language. We have to focus on communication, on speaking, and listening is also one of, one of the most important ones. So, how to speak on a topic? We have to learn how to be our own coach. I suggest my students lots of, lots of school, uh, tools and apps, and we've been using this one that I suggest to you, Youglish. Have you ever heard about Youglish? Oh, no? no? So on Youglish, you just type Youglish on Google, and then it brings you um, the sentence and words that you want. For example, if you are learning... Uh, some expressions like um, a piece of cake, for example. And then you type there into Yuglish the expression a piece of cake. And it brings you many different videos, real videos talking about it. And then with these two, you are able to practice your listening because you're going to listen the expression, the words that you are learning. You're going to listen to it into a context and this is pretty important when you are talking uh, about something when you are learning different things that you learn these words in a context so this is for learning how to say the the words correctly and how to check them in the context and when we uh, need to talk about a topic for example 
I generally recommend my students, and I do the same. Uh, we watch TED Talks because today with the technology, you have everything that you want on the internet. And then, for example, I love um, learning about emotional intelligence, public speaking. These are the topics that I love most. So I go to TED Talks and I put there, uh, public speaking and there will be lots of small videos talking about it and then listening to them you will learn about the topic and you will be at the same time practicing your listening and automatically you will be practicing your speaking because once you learn how to say the words correctly you will say them correctly so these are two tools that I recommend you Youglish to practice your uh, new words, new expressions. And the good thing from English is that you have the full video. For example, about uh, public speaking. There will be some professionals talking about public speaking, and then you can repeat the words, you can watch the whole video, and you'll be learning and practicing. Also, with TED Talks. And something that I learned on being a speaker is that you have to speak slowly and clearly. I know that sometimes when we are learning English, we sometimes think, well, native speakers, they speak so fast. So the fastest way I speak, more natural I will sound. But in fact, it's not like that. You have to speak slowly and clearly in order the other person understand you. Because if you speak too fast, they won't understand. And then they will say, can you repeat, please? What do you mean? And once you speak slowly and clearly, they will understand what you are saying. So why do... Um, why does it sound so fast? Because they make some combinations. For example, instead of saying, what is this? They say, what is this? What is this? They put the sound together. They put the vowel sound with the consonant sound. So speak slowly and clearly. You put them together. So the more you practice, the better you will speak. So don't worry about speaking fast. Once you practice more and more, you will do that naturally. Don't worry about that. And believe you can and you will. I know that most people are worried about speaking in front of others. When teacher, teachers ask students to give presentations in front of the class, they are afraid of making mistakes. They are afraid of not having a good pronunciation. But in fact, when you are speaking with people from another countries, they are not worried about your uh, pronunciation. They are not worried about your grammar. They won't correct you. They will just try understand what you are saying. So do not be afraid because you can do that. And the more you believe in yourself, the better your speech will be. But how to overcome the fear of the stage fear, how to overcome the fear of speaking in front of other, other people. So do the weird things anyway. For example, your Portuguese, um, not Portuguese because there you don't learn Portuguese, but your science teacher asks you to talk about a topic. Prepare what you have to talk. Listen about it. Today with the internet, you can learn about anything. So I suggest my students, for example, I ask them, well, you are supposed to talk about, um, some days ago, they were presenting about a rescue. So this is the topic that we had in the book. And then I ask them, you are supposed to go into the internet and search about a rescue, a famous rescue, and then you have to give a presentation in front of your uh, classmates. Then they were supposed to search on the internet to prepare their presentation, and they couldn't show, um, they couldn't read the tests. They were supposed just to show, show pictures. Then they read about that, they make notes, and when they came in front of the class, they were just showing the pictures. They Some of them were reading their papers. In the beginning, it's normal. You can read that. It's not a problem. With time, the more you practice, the more you do that, you will become confident. Okay? So it's okay to prepare. Prepare your speeches. Prepare what you're talking about. 
body language is also very important when you are communicating because when you talk in Hindi, whatever your language is, you have to convince the people what you're talking about. For example, if you are happy, wow, it is amazing. Wow, I love your clothes. If you're giving someone a compliment, you're gonna you're not gonna say, hmm. I like their clothes. If you say like that, the person won't believe what you're saying. So you have to use your body language. You have to use your hands. Your face will talk for you. So practice that while you are training your speech. Use your body language and do not be afraid of um, looking ridiculous or something like that. Because the more you use that, the more you you will convince people and they will believe you. And they are not worried about uh, your, um, I mean, they are not paying attention if you are doing the gestures right or wrong. They are just trying to understand what you are saying. They just want to understand your message. So there is no reason to be afraid of being ridiculous or something like that. Other people are not worried about it. They just want to communicate. They just want to understand you. So embrace who you are. And I can see that when it comes to learning English and talking English with other people, my Brazilian students, my students from another countries, all of them are worried about their accent. Oh, teacher, but they will laugh at my Brazilian accent. And it's not true because it's not written Brazil in your face. It's not written India or Germany or anything like that. Then And your accent, your uh, Indian accent, your Brazilian accent, your Spanish accent, this is the beauty on you. This is your identity. And you don't have to lose it because this is you. And you have to embrace and be proud of who you are. So do not worry about changing it. Be proud of it, because if you speak in English clearly, slowly, they will understand your message, they will communicate with you, and this is the most important thing. Be uncomfortable. I know that sometimes we are nervous about talking about topics that we don't know, and we are afraid of making mistakes, but there's no reason because as I said, the other people, they are not worried about correcting your grammar or they are not worried about the, the correct word, the perfect, the perfect word. No, they're just willing to understand you. So the first time, if you are uncomfortable, just breathe deeply and go there and say what you're gonna say. And be worried just about communicating and giving uh, and telling them your message. Work on your strengths, not your weaknesses. I know that sometimes after giving a speech or after a presentation at school, we are like that, oh my gosh, I should have spoken in a different way. I should have done it in a different way. But you have to be proud of what you have just done. You have to be proud of all the things that you are able to do. If you are all here, kids, you are understanding English. You can speak in English. You can understand. And it's not your native English, is it? So you have to be proud of it. You are able to do that. So focus on it. Focus on how good you do things today. Were you able to speak and understand in English some years ago? I guess you were not. So be proud of it. Be proud of the new words that you have just learned. Be proud of the things that you are able to do now. And don't worry about the things that you still don't learn. Okay, it's necessary. Trying your best, doing your best to learn and focus on learning more and more practice every day. But do not worry about all the things that you don't know. Focus on the things and be proud of all the things that you have achieved, all your micro um, things that you have already that you are already able to do. Focus on it, and then it will empower you to be a better um, student, a better speaker every day. Focus on you are able to do, and not just the things that you can to do. Okay, because if you think on all the things that you want to learn and you don't know, you'll be disappointed. 
And don't think like that because your brain believes everything you say. If you think, oh, I can't speak in English really well, your brain believes that. You have to say, I am doing my best and I, I am able to do that. Today, I am better than yesterday. If you think like that every day, your, your brain will believe it and it will be your reality. Okay, so be positive. Think in a positive way. The power of believing in you can improve. This is what I am I am just saying, that you have to believe in yourself. And you have to say every day, I am good enough, I can do it, and today I am better than I was yesterday. And there is no competition with uh, your colleagues. You have just to worry about being better, not being better than, oh my gosh, João speaks better than me. No, don't worry about that. Think that today you are a better version than you were yesterday and focus on it. Being better today than you were yesterday. Don't compare yourself with your classmates. Don't compare yourself with your teacher or with other speakers. Compare yourself with yourself. Today you are a better version than yesterday and tomorrow for sure it, you will be even better than today. Focus on it. You can... If you believe that you are able to, you can do anything. Just believe that, yes, you can do that. Do believe in yourself. Do believe that, yes, you can do anything. You can learn, learn any language. You are able to speak in front of people. You are able to talk about anything. Just practice, believe in yourself, and for sure, you'll be able to do that. That's all from me. Thank you so much for having me here. And congratulations, kids, on the wonderful work that you have been doing. I'm um, really uh, anxious to learn more about your activities there. And congratulations, teachers, for the hard work that you have been doing. Thank you so much, Vilma, ma'am. Your encouraging words, you know, it will mean a lot to all the children. And I think in the future, we'll have more such sessions. In fact, you know, man, strong communication skills are a value trait in every field and it increases one's power to influence. So uh, thank you once again for your valuable words. And as you said, that the power to win is when we have that power to win, surely we can excel in everything. So we should always think that, yes, we can and we will do it. So um, and especially the word Euclid. It was so nice to know about a new word. And also the line, speak slowly and clearly. Really, it all depends on clarity. So to overcome the stage fright was quite helpful for all our children because I think from an uh, early age only, they should inculcate this, you know, because they know a lot, but they don't, they have that fear. They cannot come out in the open. They cannot express their uh, views. So, you know, when we conduct so many sessions in this way, automatically our students are going to benefit. They are going to overcome this fear. And you spoke truly like an educator because an educator is always a facilitator. She or he facilitates learning and she always encourages. And that was done by you, ma'am. So thank you once again. Our uh, next keynote speaker is Debbie Anoy Mem from London. Well, a great educationist, a success coach, a mentor with decades of experience who often conducts live streamings on educational topics. You know, and that is so commendable. We are in the privilege to have you in our midst, ma'am. The way you conduct your webinars on classroom strategies or the positive quotes to stir the day in your page, female educators reclaim life. That is so, it always brims with positivity, with optimism, and that is enough to make you a role model. So the deliberation on the topic, importance of listening skill in communication will surely benefit our students. Be it maintaining eye contact, uh, visualizing the speaker's words, not interrupting, maintaining empathy, providing feedback, and the list goes on. And we have Debbie Ma'am in our midst. So Ma'am, it's over to you.
I think she's having some uh, network glitch, Manjuli. Okay. okay. The next speaker again, she went out. Okay. So she's there. She'll come in again. Okay. We'll move to the next speaker. Mm -hmm. So our next speaker, Brent was, uh, so he is our next guest of honor, who was the first person, you know, after us to join. So it's morning time. So let me wish you a good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning to everyone. I'm so happy thanks, to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes. <laughs> Poetry, you know, it's the food of the soul. So many of us, we write poems to express our inner feelings. A poet said, tread softly because you tread on my dreams. Such beautiful lines. And with this beautiful line, I welcome the famous poet from USA, Grant Wurst. And two years back, you know, I um, couldn't help myself reciting one of his poems in my recitation video. Uh, the profundity of each line, the sublimity still stirs the heart. We had met on the online platform of Creative Writing Modern Age when the International Poets Meet Cosmopoetica was organized in 2021. And uh, henceforth, in the subsequent meetings, the presence of this American poet added that aura of positivity, appreciation, and inspiration. And in all our programs of CWME, he was that constant motivating force. We thank you once again, sir, for being present in this platform and agreeing to be a part of our event, though we have different time zones and it makes it difficult sometimes to connect but our students will be very happy to listen to you. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, I have stage fright, so uh, I'm gonna uh, take a... Uh, uh, see, I'm already getting nervous. Anyways, take uh, Vilma's uh, 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 speech and uh, try to speak slowly and uh, have confidence in myself. I uh, started writing poetry, uh, gosh, I was about 20 years old and I started doing it, <clears throat> excuse me, just for just for fun to see if I can make words rhyme. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, as time went on, uh, my life started getting more difficult. The world is getting uglier. So I started writing about the ugliness inside of me and, and uh, what I saw in the world. And from that point on, that's what I've been writing about is uh, being upfront and honest about what I see and feel in, in, in the world and into myself. I, uh, my poetry is, it's me, an open book. It's just, uh, I put myself out there so people can uh, see what I did and who I was and hopefully learn and maybe they can get some help if they're having trouble with alcoholism or drug abuse or uh contemplating suicide and stuff i've been there and so i write about this stuff now i love love i love the the, the sounds of birds singing and the sunshine but to me i write about the dark reality everywhere i see um through my eyes and so i write the poems and uh just upfront and honest and ho like i said so hopefully people can uh, relate some people can relate and get the help they need that's basically why I write and it's also therapy for me I uh, if I feel sad I'll write a poem and uh, more times than not I feel better I can cleanse myself of that uh, ugliness that I was feeling that's holding me down so and uh, I'm always happy to share my poems uh, what you re what you read is is me um, and uh Madame likes my poem. She 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 uh, uh, invites me to share, and I appreciate it very much. Um, I just do what I can to help people feel a different way. Um, uh, I have a I have a poem here. Uh, Madame and I are talking about. I have a few here, but uh, maybe only time for one. But uh, I'll go ahead and read it if anybody wants to hear it. Okay. It's called a poet himself. He walks through a hole that's breaking the night into another time as he holds himself tight. He cuts his pain into each arm as his tears start to fall, always listening for hope on the other side of the wall. 
On every side of the night, there are whispers heard. So many voices, decisions only in lies to a word. Sooner or later, the crying will begin. Then the shadows will laugh and count the tears of sin. More drink than words so his future won't last. A poet of himself in anger, suffocating in pain from his past. Self-teaching and mere thoughts of creating self-time. Now the night sinks its teeth into the self-mutilated mime. With moments of silence, his breath echoes a silent beat. His heart is punctured and dirty, his fate sealing his defeat. He sees the hole in the night that's starting to disappear. The wall will never fall for there's nothing left to hear. A piece of night broken for a shadow to hold, putting it to the throat of a poet, his future's getting old. His, he dreams that his words will honor his final tombstone to read about the deaths of his yesterday and the reasons he's alone. He traded his values for gold, ever the man to a fool. Still, life is a teacher of pain, squaring off for each duel. Admiring his wounds and the scars they will leave, a man to himself in a mirror's reflection, too broken to believe. The end. I, uh, most of my poetry is dark. Like I said, it's about the way I see life, the way I was in my past. I'm a recovering alcoholic. I'm a recovering drug addict. I don't even smoke cigarettes anymore. But my past is my past. And uh, I can't make it disappear. So like I said, I write about it. And and uh, and then I share. And uh, that's my life. I love, love being a poet. I read poetry. I, uh, I keep... I keep a pen in my pocket in case I get inspired. Sometimes I even write on my hand so I don't forget some of the lines that I uh, that I have in my head. Uh, when I'm at work and there's a little downtime, I'll take a piece of paper and start writing a poem. Uh, I'll get up in the middle of the night, come downstairs, and uh, I'll have a dream, and I'll write about the dream in a, a poetic style. I just love to write i love to read and i love to share my life and the the the, the beauty of the beauty of poetry i just i think it's wonderful and uh i tell people online i have my poetry page and they ask how to write a poem and i just say write what's inside of you what write what you feel take a walk what do you see what do you hear write about that a poem does not have to rhyme. Uh, uh, I prefer to rhyme a poem, uh, either in the uh, uh, one, two beat or the two, four beat as, as far as rhyming. But uh, they asked me these, these young kids, how do you do it? Just write what you feel, write what you, uh, if you love, uh, if, if you feel sad, pain, happiness, write about it. And uh, uh, just have fun doing it. And uh, I tell them, poetry can be frustrating. To write, it can be frustrating. Where are the words? How come they're not coming to me? Uh, it's patience. You can uh, you can force a poem out of you. But I like to just uh, uh, wait till they start coming into my head and then uh, only a, maybe a line or two, and then I'll take it from there. And uh, I can write a poem in a half an hour, and sometimes it takes me two days to write a poem. It all depends. Um, I uh, I just it's 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 part of my life and uh, my wife understands you know sometimes I'll be on the computer typing and uh, writing and stuff I have uh, all kinds of books and uh, notebooks and stuff I have I have hundreds of them that I I write and uh, a lot of my poems look ugly because I have to uh, cross it out yes this is right this is wrong. This could be better, but uh, it's all in the process. And I like if you want to start writing, just pick up a pen and just start writing what you feel and uh, have fun. Um, and that's about it. <laughs>
but it is my life. Thank you all very much. And I uh, uh, appreciated you all listening to me. Brian, that was powerful, 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 powerful. It was really, Thank really you. powerful. Really, really Thank powerful. You Thank you for that. It was really powerful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Really, you know, poetry describes a scene or it tells a story in a lyrical arrangement of words. And we poets, you know, we find solace when we express our inner self. And it is grief and it is pain which uh, gives us that motivation to write and write. And as you were talking about the dark reality of life, that is something which inspires us. So there are setbacks in our life, but that gives us a great comeback. Isn't it so? So Yes, yes, ma'am. May, may I say one more thing? Yes, sir, definitely. Okay, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's kind of graphic, but back in my day when uh, I was hurting myself most of my past is because it's my fault and i admit that it's no problem but what used to make me feel good of course was uh i loved alcohol more than anything and i would drink but also i would i don't know if you can see it i would cut myself okay all so. these right here i would cut myself to feel better i don't do that anymore that was 20 years 30 years ago now i write poetry to feel better about myself. And like I said, I could I could cry as I write because it's sad or I, I'll, I'll smile, you know, because I'm writing a good poem. And uh, that I just, instead of doing something bad now, I feel I'm doing something good. So that's the changes in me to the positive. And that's part of the story I'm trying to get out there to the readers and stuff too. Thank you for that. Thank you. Really, poetry has that healing power. And so as you write about the dark reality, expressing your pain, Yet there is optimism, you know, at the end of the poem. And that is the beauty, your realization, that self-realization, your true self, revealing your true self. And that adds to the beauty of the poems. And uh, poetry is definitely emotions recollected in tranquility. As the greatest poet, he had said, he had given that remark. So we'll get into more sessions. And I think our students, basically the ones who uh, enjoy writing poems, they will definitely like. And the way you expressed your true nature, they will definitely adore you, sir. And um, so after thank poetry, you. thank you, sir. Thank you so much for being in our show. So thank after you. poetry, I think Debbie Ma'am is here. So, when we, yes, they oh, yes. Good. Apologies, people, because um, my internet is a little bit unstable. So, there might be a time when the internet decides to just go out, do its own thing. So, my apologies. Okay. okay. So, anyway, JB, ma'am, it's a pleasure to have you in our midst. So, already I had told our audience that you are such a great educationist. You are a success coach, a mentor with decades of experience. And we are indeed privileged to have you in our midst. So, you have that page, Female Educators Reclaim Life, where you give the quotes always. And that is filled with so much optimism. It's so nice in the morning when we read that, we are motivated. And even the students, you know. So, uh, really? like, so you guys are looking at my page. Okay. <laughs> so you are truly a mentor, a success coach in that way. So like, you know, the deliberation on the topic is importance of listening skill in communication. I think this is going to benefit our students because when we talk, we have to maintain that eye contact. We have to visualize the speaker's words and we shouldn't interrupt. We should have that empathy that uh, then after that, we have to provide the feedback and all this are again associated with our listening skill and why listening skills are so important ma'am we have a listening activity also for the children but we are going to accommodate that towards the end of the program but now we want you to speak on the topic <clears throat> right hello everybody as i was introduced as a teacher yes my day job is a teacher and i also have i'm doing various things in terms of i want to be presenter i'm not there yet but as a teacher, we all present. 
And one of the topics I've been given to talk about is the importance of listening skills. Young people, it is not about you always listening to your teachers. It's also your teacher listening to you as well. It is so very, very important that it's a two-way dialogue. However, there's sometimes it ends up being a one-way dialogue where the teacher are not talking with you, they're talking at you. And when they're talking at you, I know, and you know, you're not listening because they've lost you. They've lost you for several reasons, either because they're so boring, I know that, I've seen it myself, or they're not engaging. In order, for, in order for us to actually engage our students, we need to take them on a journey. The journey is we need to be in the head, so they act, so we actually going it going through with them. Many times teachers are not taking children, young people on a journey. The teachers are just talking and talking and talking. After 10 minutes, you've lost your students. In order to engage with your student, you need to make sure what you're talking about, these students are actually engaging with it. So therefore you need to make connection with your students. And so teach you. Okay. Okay. Everybody, please mute yourself. Mute yourself, please. Right. And, and some teachers, because they're not... <laughs> this is what live does, right? We on live, and we have all this, this, this interaction. Apologies, ma'am. That's the beauty of life, right? Another thing is when teachers are not connecting with the students, the students are not connecting with them. So therefore, you've lost the student. So it doesn't matter what topic you're talking about. You have to make a connection so the student enjoy. It. For example, one of the things I teach about is. I teach psychology, I teach sociology, I teach health and social care. So those are the three, and also childcare. So those are the four main areas I teach in colleges and school. Right now I'm in a school. And as a psychologist, I know that the brain could only accommodate at least 20 and 30 minutes of any communication, especially if teachers are just talking at the students. So which means after 20 minutes, your brain is gone. It's okay, I understand that. So because I connect with my students and I'm able to see what's going on with them, I actually see when I've lost them. So therefore I know I need to change the things around, which means I would give them a brain break and I'll say to them, okay, let's break. So I'll give them a coloring to do and then I get them back on task. It means that when I ask them questions to reflect on what I talk about, I would get quite a lot of the reflection because I've actually given them a break and I stop in the middle. So the more teachers actually talk at the children, we're not getting them. We need to engage with them. Another thing is when you're actually talking, because I one of the areas, as I said, I talk about psychology, I talk about the brain. For example, let's say if I'm doing anything to do with the brain, I say to the students, we are looking at your brain. How does it connect? not anyone else's brain. I need to make it connect with you so that you would understand what I'm talking about and you would see, and I would also get you to be listening to me. So in order for people to listen, we need to make sure that we make it connect to them or else they're not listening. It's like when we do group work exercise, I say to the students, I want you to be in the activity, not out of the activity. You have to be part of the activity so that you enjoy it and you're able to put across the topic, right? That's when we actually talk about poetry. It's like you're being in it. That's what teaching is all about. The students being in the subject so they feel part of it. So as being part of it, you're going to be able to express it. And that's how content of any topic should be taught. You, and that's how you're going to get the students to listen to you. It means that you put them in the subject. Another area I talk about is I teach sociology. So let's say if I'm talking about capitalism, I'm saying to my student, when we are looking at capitalism, capitalism is what's out there is the competition, is you know, what is expected of you, et cetera. So I'm saying to them, you need to look around and see how it connects. So 
the more students are able to listen to us and communicate with us, we need to make sure they're part of it, not just we talking at them. That also goes for parents. It is so important that we listen, not just, not just hear. We need to listen and hear what the students are saying. Too often we are listening to them, but are we really hearing what they say? There is a difference. Because too often teachers are busy, they're listening to the students, but are they really hearing the students? Because you know what? If they were hearing the students in terms of grades and in terms of enjoyment of a topic, this student will enjoy the topic a lot more because these teachers are not hearing the student. They're just listening because they're too busy giving through the information and not observing what the students is taking in. It is so very important. And it is so, you know, we also needed to realize that we do not talk at our students. We need to talk with our students. Too often the mistake teachers make all the time is you are talking at the students. They're human beings as well. We need to engage them in the dialogue. The more we engage them in the dialogue, whatever topic we're talking about, the more we're gonna get the enjoyment and the more we're gonna get them on task with us. Because talking at the student is a no-no. So therefore you will not get them to listen. You think they're listening. Ask them a question three minutes later. They don't know what you're talking about because you know why? Either you're too boring, you're not engaging with them, you're not listening to them, you're not making it connect with them. So whatever topic we are talking about as teachers, we need to make sure that we take the student on a journey and the students are able to connect with it. So therefore we connect it to their life. The more we have the topic connecting with the student's life, the more they're all able to understand it. So as I say, when I'm talking about the brain, I actually tell them, it's not the brain in the book, it's the brain in your head. So everything we're talking about, that's what we're looking at, the brain in your head. And when we are talking about behavior, it's not the, it's not the behavior in the book. It's your behavior or someone else's behavior you might observe. So how could we connect that behavior? So the most important thing in terms of listening skills is making the connection and not just listening, but hearing and asking the right questions. Asking the questions that connect with these young people so that they actually feel that you are valuing them. You think they are important. The more important our student feels, the more they're going to be listening to us. The less important you make them feel, the less they're going to be listening to you. We need to make them feel important. We need to make them feel valued. We need to make them feel that they're good enough, whatever they're coming to us with. We also need to meet our students where they are. It doesn't matter where they are, we meet them there. And we take them to where we want them to be. That is so very important. Too often we are taking students to where we want them to be without meeting them where they are. It is important that we meet our students where they are. It may not be where we want them to be. It may not be what we like them to be and where they are. But we need to meet them where they are and start taking them on the journey. And another thing is that's the only way they're going to be listening to you. Because I've gone into class, because one of the things I also do as well, I observe teachers. I've gone into the class and the students are doing their own thing because they've switched off. And you know what? The teacher have not even noticed that the students have switched off because they're too busy teaching the contents, not observing that the students are not listening. When they're not listening, it means that they're not able to repeat or summarize what we've spoken about. And the topic we want them to understand, they have not understood it. Because why? We have lost them. Why? It's either we're too boring or we're not making the connection. We need to remember, people learn best when they're able to connect with what you're talking about. So if I want my students to connect and understand, I need to make sure that if I'm talking about Capitalism, if I'm talking about the brain, I also have to make it connect to them. The more information is connected to us, the more we're going to understand it, the more we're going to want to listen, the more we're going to be able to summarize it, and the more it's going to make sense to us. 
those are the important factors. And that's not only for teachers, it's also for parents as well. Because as parents, if we do not value our children and feel that they're good enough, they will not be listening to us. And we need to stop lecturing to our children. We need to be talking to them, having dialogue and ask them what their thoughts are. That's the same way we need to teach. We need to ask our student, okay, I've said, what do you think? What are your thoughts? How can you connect what I've said to what you think is in your head? Make the connection. If they're not able to make the connection, it means that they're just memorizing an information. And I do not want any student to just memorize what I say. I want them to understand what I say so that they could summarize what I say. And it become, it's coming from a place of understanding. So those are the important factors. In order for people to listen to you, you need to make sure they're able to connect with the material and it is connecting to them. It doesn't matter what we're talking about. If we're doing maths, we make it connect to them. Like, okay, if you're going to the shops, how are you going to connect the, you know, the change, et cetera. We need to make our teaching come alive. If it does not come alive, the student have lost the material. It doesn't matter how important the material is and how much they need to get that information. But if you are not making it connect to them, it becomes boring. And I know for myself, I've been into lecture where it is so boring, I've switched off. Because you know why? The, 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 the speaker is not reading the audience and not taking that audience on a journey. Because when you take your audience on a journey, the audience is connected. They could see themselves in the material because they need to visualize. That's the same way we as teachers have to do. It doesn't matter what we're teaching. We need to find a way that our students are able to visualize the information and it comes alive to them. That sometimes you might find that you may not be able to express and explain it as good as the next door neighbor. Ask the students next door neighbor to, okay, you to discuss it. Because when my students do group work, I say, hold on, you guys need to discuss it because you don't know the experience your peer might have. They might have an experience where it is valuable to the topic that we're discussing. So that's why you need to not just hear them, listen to them and listen to where they're coming from. Those are important factors. Teachers need to listen to their students as much as the students need to listen to them. Because when we don't listen to our students, we lose our students. Uh, which means that you cannot expect students to listen to you when you are not listening to them. You need to listen to them so that you know that where the gaps are, what the gaps you need to fill and what they did not understand in the lesson that you've just taught. So listening skills is a powerful, powerful skill. It's not only for our students. As I said, it's also for us. I think it's even more for us than for our students because we need to listen to what they're telling us. And when we're hearing it, we're hearing what they're not telling us as well because that's important, especially post COVID time. We need to be listening what the students are not telling us in words. Because there's so many things they're telling us, and when we're not listening, we are missing it. Because they're explaining it to you, but because you're not listening to the words and visualizing the words in your eyes, etc., you're not hearing what they're telling us. Because not all the time they're able to tell us exactly what's going on with them. We need to be listening enough so that we are picking through the gaps. So we know what is happening there. So we're able to fill the gaps because some students may not be able to tell us everything they need to tell us. We need to be listening so much. So we're picking up even the little minute things. So that's important. It's important for a teacher and a parent. Forget about the students listening to you. You need to be listening to them much more than they're listening to you because only then could you be able to support them in the things that they have not said to you verbally, but because you're listening so much, you are hearing the things that are meant to be said. It's important. So that's what I want to leave you guys with, the power of listening and what it does to our young people. It makes them feel valued. 
It makes them feel good enough. It makes them feel that they're worth it. It makes them feel important. It makes them feel that like someone is listening to them. And that is so, so, so important because I've gone into schools where the students are saying to me, Miss, you're the only one that understands us. Really? Because some teachers are not listening enough to hear the things they're meant to say. It's important that we listen, not just listen, but hear what the students are saying, the young people are saying to us. That is important. You know, teachers are too busy. Oh, this student haven't listened. This student's not listening. But are you really listening to them? Do you know why they're not listening? Your lesson is too boring. They cannot connect to your lesson because they don't feel part of the lesson. So those are the things we need to be aware of. As a teacher, I am conscious, I am so consciously aware of it. We need to be consciously listening. That's the reason why we are hearing the things that they're not able to fully express because we are so consciously listening and we are feeling our students. It's important we feel our students. Empathy, empathy is powerful. Listening alone is not enough. We need to be empathetic. So we're hearing them so loudly that we know the pain and we know what we need to do to support them on their journey. So the power of listening is much greater than we think because it, ha it holds a lot because it makes the students feel that they're good enough and they need to be listened to. And what they're saying is important and has value. That's all I want to leave you with. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you Thank so you much, much. Ma Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was very informative, ma'am. So uh, like this line you said, talk with the students. Don't talk at the students. So really, it is a lesson for all of us and even to all the parents and I think the audience, the children, everybody will agree to each and every word that you spoke. The difference between listening and hearing. Yes, we often listen, but do we really hear? So, exactly, that is so, ma'am. Each and every word or line, it was so engaging. The way we connect with the students, making them feel valued. And that is the power of listening. So, I hope the audience, the students will agree with us and we'll uh, keep the interactive session towards the end. If the students have any questions, they can proceed with it. Thank you once again, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So now the best is yet to come because you know, I would now like to welcome our next guest of honor, Dr. Anjum Najir Kureshi, ma'am. She is the professor of Rajiv Gandhi College of Engineering Research and Technology, Changapur, Maharashtra. We are honored to have in our midst a life coach, parenting coach, career counselor, freelance trainer, and motivational speaker. Her association with several organizations, motivating students and professionals with her cool demeanor and amiable nature, so knowledgeable yet so humble. Truly, ma'am, this is leadership and emotional intelligence required to be a speaker in a public forum. In our programs uh, together, we really get so involved and your amiable nature, it really inspires and encourages everyone. Well, uh, further to mention about Anju, ma'am, she has authored 10 core life skills and co-authored six textbooks, published 20 plus research papers and two patents. It will be a privilege to listen to her speak on the topic, ways to develop creative and critical thinking. Over to you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, ma'am, and Rishina, ma'am, for this wonderful opportunity. And uh, it's a great platform because I can see, uh, like, uh, especially our mentor, Dr. Rajput Sir, and uh, Grant Sir was joined for, uh, from Canada, I think. And uh, also, Devi, ma'am, I was listening. It was re really very good. And uh, yes, uh, as you said, I have to speak about yes, creative thinking and critical thinking. So, these are two thinking capabilities, actually. There are, uh, these are two thinking techniques that we can see. 
like being from an engineering background, so where I I I am very much you know associated with those uh, programming skills and all. So let me just discuss. I will just take a small example. Like for example, every one of us, uh, we are fond of online shopping, right? So when we go for online shopping, uh, you must have seen that again, uh, like if you want to buy a T-shirt, for example. And what all do you see when uh, you log into a shopping website? Uh, let's say, let's consider like you log into Amazon and then you start searching for a t-shirt because yes, you have to buy a t-shirt. And it's not just a t-shirt, but you look for options. There are filters when you go there. Uh, there are filters uh, where uh, you can select a t-shirt uh, based on color, based on brand or based on your size, based on the price that you want. So there are, it is, uh, there are different kind of, you know, expectations that a customer has when he logins to the website. Now, I would like to ask, how this is happening? Like when I say that I want to buy a t-shirt, so I just select it. Then we use the filters over there to select according to our, uh, you know, our likings, like, yes, I want uh, some black color t-shirt or I want of a particular brand or I want an, uh, a t-shirt only in this particular range. So those are all the options that appear to us. But how does it come to us? You know, some, uh, some of you must be saying, yeah, nowadays everyone knows uh, that AI being, is, is being used over here, right? Yes, of course, AI is being used. But how is it used? It is due to the programming skills of the programmers, the so working on it. It is the programmer who actually tries to analyze like what all uh, articles a customer would like to buy on the website and then what are his preferences, right? So when we're talking about programming skills, it is not just a coding that is being done, but behind the coding, there are very, uh, you know, very important thinking skills that are working that is creative thinking and critical thinking. Firstly, it must start with critical thinking. When we know, uh, when, uh, for the first time when I heard this word, and for the first time in the college when I said that I want to organize a workshop for critical thinking, many people started say, thinking about it, like what is critical thinking? Because when we see the word critical, the people go in a different direction, but actually critical thinking is thinking rationally. It is evaluating everything, evaluating the options that you have, and then going, then selecting one of them. And like, I, I can see there are very young students who have joined uh, on this workshop today. So let me tell you, because after a few years, after, of course, you are going to be professionals, you are going to work, uh, or you, you might be entrepreneurs, but whatever the profession you follow, uh, let me tell you that critical think thinkers are always in high demand in the workplace because, yes, the companies, they always need better individuals. They need the individuals who are uh, more informed, who can give better solutions. And, yes, it always helps you. Because how it will help critical thinking? It will improve your decision-making and evaluate the validity of its arguments and its potential impact it helps you to form, form your own opinions on a topic and develop your ethics and confidence. Uh, it will help you to engage on a deeper, more intellectual level with your co-workers and supervisors to form stronger working relationships and evaluate your work to determine ways to improve quality and efficiency. And of course, of course you will be developing better comprehension skills both in your conversation, that is when you're speaking with someone and also while doing uh, with, with there are other activities like whether you're reading or writing. So it always helps you. So how should we develop this critical thinking skills? Now, the first one is you have to become self-aware. Yes, this is the very first important step. And uh, like uh, Manchi Man was telling you, that I have written a book, 10 core life skills. So this is the first life skill that I have written about, becoming self-aware, because this is the first and the most important thing because we don't know ourselves we don't know what are our qualities and we don't and if we don't realize what are our potentials what are our qualities how can we work on it so yes we have to be 
self aware because becoming self aware means considering your thought process your values your moral ethics and the beliefs so what do you believe in what are your beliefs how are your thoughts how are you how are you reflecting those values how, what are your strengths what are your weakness what are your preferences so the very first thing to develop critical thinking is to understand yourself better the next one i will say you have to understand your mental process means mental process here i would like to say like if you're getting your if you're receiving information so how do you identify it and how do you evaluate it because nowadays we can see uh, there is lot of information that is coming to us through the social media we receive a lot of information especially uh, the apps like we use the whatsapp instagram and all you can see yes number of posts that are being made number of messages that comes and popping on the screens so how do you use them because many times they may say yes the information that is coming that is not genuine that is not authentic and we just forward it so we have to think over it right and the third thing is you have to develop the foresight so you have to you know you consider how others will feel about the situation or the decision you make this is a very important part of critical thinking like whatever you want to do uh let it be anything let it be anything it's your in your personal life or your professional life if you want to do a particular task you have to also see what will be the effect of your step on others how it is going to affect your friends how it is going to affect your family or if you are at the professional level how it is going to affect your colleagues or how it is going to affect your company so you have to think over it the fourth one is active listening and yes of course many of uh, the earlier speakers they have already spoken so much about active listening because without active listening nothing can be done it is a foundational element of effective critical thinking you have to listen carefully and attentively when you are working either with your colleagues or with your coworkers or with your friends and you have to practice empathy empathy is understanding the situation of others putting yourself into the situation of others yes of course you have to practice empathy and focus on understanding the perspective of others you have to gain a full understanding of what they need what they expect and how can you help others like i was given an example of online shopping so how we are going to uh, how we are able to uh, enjoy that shopping because those websites they know what do the customers expect from us they expect not only to some uh, to display some articles on the screen but they want that when a person is searching for a particular article for some commodity then uh the all the options that are available it should be easily available to the customer yes of course so that is again uh, where uh, we uh, that helps to develop critical thinking then yes one more important thing is asking questions you should never hesitate like i can see the students we uh, were sitting over here when you are in class don't hesitate to ask questions yeah a teacher may be very good the teacher may be explaining something uh, in a very good manner but still some of you you must be having some kind of doubt it's okay that the uh, 99% students are able to understand it well but you are not able to understand so it is nothing at normal because everyone is different yeah everyone is different in this way so don't hesitate to ask questions whether in class whether in workplace whether in your personal life yes if you have something in mind if you have some query and yes of course this having this query having this curiosity it really works because when you have that curiosity you ask questions and when you get the answers only then you will be able to find the solutions right and of course there's asking questions if you see uh, if you see on the online uh, when you have there will be lot of surveys that are going on uh, and we never realize why this is going on but this is actually how the organizations are working to improve themselves for example you can see like uh, when uh, when you're buying something online th that was the example which i began when you see what you see is how the customers have responded to it how they have written their reviews says okay this dress was very good you know this was not so good this was this had uh, uh, this is not worth the price so if you search uh, if you see such comments 
so you were you would not like buy, to buy it okay so these are all you know uh, the uh, kind of surveys that is being done online we do it and sometimes we can see some polls coming up so of course you don't hesitate to ask questions and yes evaluating ex evidence that is again important because you have to use your previous experiences and on the basis of that you should start developing uh, something because sometimes uh, you, you must be having a good experience and you must be having bad experience. So whenever you take another step, whenever you're thinking of developing a new project, so always use your past experiences. And like when we do research work, what we do is like we are developing an algorithm. So what we do is we just try to run the algorithm and we have a certain objective that we write it earlier. And if I see, like, like for example, if I wanted some value to come at 1.5, so when I run that algorithm, I will have to check, okay, I'm getting this value is 1.5. No, I'm not getting it. I'm getting it very less. So that means I have to improve my algorithm. I have to run my algorithm again. So we have to, we go on repeating the steps till we achieve the value that we targeted for. So this is what you have to do. You have to evaluate the existing evidence. You have to keep on working it. You have to keep on improving it. And then, uh, then uh, your students, you have to keep on uh, communicating with your teachers, with your mentors. You Because having a mentor, it always helps. It always helps. Because your teachers, you know, that we have, uh, they're the greatest source of knowledge. Of course, they can help you a lot. They can help you with your experience. They can help you to have uh, better solutions, to uh, to have better decisions in your life. They can help you to focus while using, how you will be using your critical thinking techniques or they might sometimes they might be having some resources which help which they can which can help you to develop critical thinking and then you you should participate in team building activities there are many activities i know at the class level uh, or at the school level if you see there are many activities that are initiated by the teachers so pa participate actively into it because most of the time what the students is, uh, will be doing is there is an activity where five students have to participate so some two of them will be participating actively and the three of them will be sitting just watching others. So please don't do that. Just participate actively. Have that confidence. Generate that confidence amongst you. Don't think that, okay, this person can go and uh, can present. This person can go and speak. This person can think. No, everyone can think. Everyone can speak. Everyone can do anything. So yes, you should be participating in team building activities. And the third and very most important thing is leadership opportunities. Now, being a leader doesn't mean that uh, you should be the principal of a school or you should be the boss of an office, but everyone of us needs to develop leadership qualities and ministers. And yes, don't uh, hesitate to get those leadership opportunities. For example, as a student, if a teacher tells that, okay, you, uh, you have to form a team and you have to uh, organize some activity in the class, you have to uh, just engage some class. So yes, just go for it. Don't hesitate, never hesitate. Because sometimes, you know, just remember that sometimes there has to be a first time. So when you just hesitate to uh, start with that first time, you can never do. So yes, taking the first step is always important. Always be ready to accept the leadership opportunities. And then, of course, creativity. Then we, uh, the second term that I was talking about is creative thinking skills. Sometimes the people just confuse between creativity and critical thinking, uh, cre creative thinking skills. But yes, there's a minor difference into that. So creativity, it helps, it is a skill again that helps to solve challenges in your job to achieve your long-term and the short-term goals in daily life. And creative thinkers, if we can say, they are not uh, some different kind of people. They are very normal people like us. But yes, of course, they think in a different way. So critical thinking is something which helps you to analyze and come up with the solution. But the creative thinking is a method in which you come up with a novel method, with an innovative method to solve that particular problem. The problem is same. But of course, you know, everyone has a different approach. Everyone has a different method to solve it. And the critical thinking, creative thinkers are the ones who come up with new ideas with who come up with novel ideas what they do is they just evaluate what others have done in the same field they explore numerous solutions they think unconventionally and they take calculated risks well uh there are a number of uh, examples that i can think if you just see like filmmakers like Walt disney 
And uh, you can see how different that was, uh, the the cartoon characters that were developed by him. I think I when I was really small, I was very young. I used to be very fond of it, and that craze is still being continued. Like right? so, yes, uh, and uh, of course, that 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 was a great example of creative thinking. And yes, um, how to develop creative thinking? Well, it is again not so difficult. First, of course, you have to prepare. Of course, you always have to start with the preparation step. Suppose you have a problem, so you have to focus on the problem, you have to gather information about it, and the more knowledge you have about it, uh, about the problem, the easier it will be to solve it. And you know, then you're sometimes when you're thinking about yes, this is a problem, and you have to solve it. And sometimes you think that till I finish the task, I should not be leaving it. But my dear friends, let me tell you, when you are just trapped into a uh, you know difficult situation, sometimes it is better uh, to take a break. Just take a break sometime, and let uh, your mind rest. And once when you come back after this break, you have uh, you know. Uh, you're filled with so many of positive feelings. Uh, your mind is refreshed. So think after that. Yes, of course, when you are really hooked up over somewhere, just take a break. It always works. It always works, right? And then after you have an idea, you can try it. I think uh, I just said this when uh, you're uh, about critical thinking also. Yes, you have to try it. Because until unless you try it, nothing is going to work. You cannot build up a perfect solution for your problem if you don't try it. You will fail a number of times. Yes, it is there. You, you will fail a number of times before you reach to a solution of your problem. And especially when we are talking about creative thinking, this is where you are going to develop a unique and innovative solution. So without failing, you are never going to achieve it at the first step. So once you have an idea, you can try it. See if it is work, and if the solution is not suitable, just go back to the step one and repeat the process and find the best one and verify its practical effectiveness. You have to see, okay, uh, if you think of, of a solution, if you're achieved the solution, but still you think how it is going to affect practically everyone of us. And when we are working in the research field, even there, they try to come up with the solution that can be used by the people. We don't, we, we just, uh, you know, avoid uh, such kind of projects. We just avoid doing such kind of research where it should, uh, where it is uh, just uh, after finishing, it is uh, just kept in the thesis. No, we want that everything, every resource that should, uh, that we do, it should come up to the people. And you just like every time uh, you must see and talking uh, so much about research yes, in research too, in, in research and programming, everywhere we are using this creative and critical thinking skills. And yes, to develop this creative thinking, uh, you should have checklists. It is just like preparation, but yes, you should start by asking questions about the problem. You have to gather the information. And yes, the six universal questions here, I'd say, but uh, I just forgot earlier, like what, why, how, when, where, and who. So those are some of the questions that you should keep on asking. And um, uh, the next thing is, for example, you must have heard about six thinking hat strategy. It was developed by Edward de Bono in the 1980s, I think. And you think of, because, you know, everyone has a different perspective. Everyone has a different uh, perception of thinking. So you have to evaluate everything of them. You have to think of all the poss possible solutions. I mean, then you have to know what other people think about it. Like, uh, for example, uh, you can think about the facts, you can think about how the solution uh, uh, that, that you have developed is going to affect the emotion of others. You have to think of your control, you have to think of creativity, and yes, you uh, here you have to value the ideas and opinions of each and everyone that is associated with you. And this, is, this will especially work when you're working in a tree. And then to develop the creative thinking, you have to try mind mapping. It is sometimes, uh, it is also called as brainstorming, yes, brainstorming sessions. This is, you know, this activity involves, you know, just writing down the ideas that appear in your mind and then give time to select. It is not that I just write down few ideas on the paper and then 
very uh, instantly I come up with a solution, write down the idea, think about it, and then come up with a solution. And yes, you should also think laterally because try to look at the problem from a fresh perspective and angle. And so if you are accustomed to thinking and acting in sequential order, you can try to think of ways that are completely unrelated to the situation. And then she says, we just don't want to walk out of the uh, box. But I say, think out of the box, come out of your comfort zone. And sometimes when you come out of your comfort zone, only then you are able to find the best solution. So this is where creative thinking works. And of course, word association, it works in creative thinking. So this is actually an activity uh, which uh, we can be taking in the class sometimes that even I take. Uh, so, uh, and uh, yes, uh, we started uh, with such a kind of activity, uh, the session where we were told to write two ob adjectives the same, uh, for example, if my name is Sanjum and it starts from A and the adjective that I'm writing, it should also start from A. So this was like an example of word association. So this is uh, a very good exercise that helps you to develop your creative, creative thinking. And yes, of course, you can try to relate uh, them in many ways. And yes, you, you can watch interviews. You can read biographies and this are actually available nowadays because of the internet, because of the social media. You have exposure to all of this. You should listen to the artists. You should listen to the leaders. You should listen to entrepreneurs. In fact, any kind of profession that you would be liking. Some of you may be liking to listen to your favorite uh, celebrities, some favorite cricketers, sometimes favorite actors. You start uh, listening to them. Okay, and when the other thing of the creative thinking is, you should start writing also. Start creative writing. Writing blogs, maintaining a journal. It can help to express your thoughts, your feelings. Learn to express your feelings. Learn to express your thoughts. So when you combine, you know, the reading and writing, uh, your mind can connect ideas and it can discover unique concepts. And if you want to solve your problems, always learn to socialize, always talk to others. Because what we work, what I believe is, you when you want to come up with a solution, the solution should be such that it should be applicable to all. It should be useful for all. And here we always work with the concept local solutions to local problems. So of course, you have to, uh, you know, socialize. You have to talk to the people. The more you talk to the people, you will always know how uh, the different people are working, what are the different cultures, what are their expectations. Because yes, as I already said, everyone has a different perspective. So you need to socialize. So those are some of uh, the methods by which you can be uh, improving your creative thinking. And of course, when you have creative thinking, your problem solving skills will be improved. You, and once you have, have better problem solving skills, your confidence will be boosted up and you will have freedom of thought because when you uh, start thinking out of the box, uh, out of the set of the rules, so you, you not only expose yourself to new ideas, but also allow yourself to be free of judgment and prejudices. So uh, you can uh, better socialize with others and develop your networking skills. It helps to develop your leadership skills. And uh, at, uh, uh, if you're aim to be an entrepreneur yes it will always help you to promote your entrepreneur skills of, of course and yes when you are able to do all this it will improve your quality of life so yes when you develop this creative thinking and critical thinking skills in yourself you your personality will be more positive it will raise your career prospects and it will help you progress in life so please utilize the creative and critical thinking skills. It will help you to reduce your stress levels and relieve anxiety, and it will improve your overall well-being. So this is what I I have to say. Thank you very much once again. Thank you, thank you, Anju, ma'am. Really, uh, we need that self-awareness, and we should realize our potentialities for possessing critical thinking. And you also told about the need of listening, evaluating, communicating, which are indeed the soft skills which are required to focus for career success. 
And I think the students, they will really benefit a lot because you spoke about leadership qualities and uh, the team spirit. And, uh, you know, that was so engaging. And uh, the fact that you said that they shouldn't hesitate to come forward. And that also will mean a lot to everyone. Thank you once again, ma'am. We now proceed with the second activity. May I request Sachini to kindly proceed with the second activity for the children. So, Yes, ma'am. So this is going to be our sec second activity for today. So here we see a picture. So here we see the picture. So I want everyone to write an appealing line to describe the picture. So you can write it to the uh, chat uh, box. So just write what comes to your mind. And uh, you've got three minutes. And uh, I would like to show an example as well. Where this picture shows hard work beats talent when talent does, doesn't do hard work. So likewise, you can give a ca caption, a captivating one. So let's start the activity now.
Okay, so the time is over. I think we've got uh, many. And we'll see who is the winner at the end of the program. Yeah, sure, Stachini. It was wonderful to read uh, the captions of all the students and the participants, that is, even the uh, our special guests and the guest of honor. We came up with so nice captions, and that's the beauty of critical thinking, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. So, uh, really. So we'll see to it. And in the meantime, I would just like to mention about Veena Ma'am. We have Veena Hassan Parveen Ma'am, the storytelling mentor of Creative Writing Modern Age. So, Ma'am, it's a pleasure to have you joining with us. So would you like to tell something, Ma'am, to leave a message to our students? Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you hear me, Monjoy? Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. I was, I'm was. i sorry I was a little late because I was a little busy. But I thought uh, because you personally gave a message also, I had to budge in. Yeah. Lovely to see everybody and lovely to hear. I think I could hear from Debbie, ma'am. And it's lovely to see so many students here also. And it's a very interesting topic, I think, about listening and speaking skills. Well, being a teacher, all we can say is that what I feel is that four elements of speaking skills are vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, and fluency. And uh, communication has to be very effective because I do follow the five C's, which is it has to be clear, it has to be correct, complete, concise, and compassionate. And for me, the basic writing skills I would always say being a teacher will always be spelling, capital, capitalization, punctuation, handwriting, and sentence structure. And it's of course, as teachers, we also do believe that unless the student listens to us, or if we are not able to make the connect, how will the children respond, you know? The thing is that it's not enough just to go to the class as a teacher and just keep on speaking because we have to speak. It's very important to connect with the students, with the child. Now, being a storyteller, that is something which we also feel, to build the trust with our audience. So when we narrate a story, we also feel that, yes, how can we make our audience listen to us? So it's not that I just go on narrating without interacting. Interacting is also something very, very important. And that is what speaking skill is all about. You have to communicate. Unless you communicate, you will not be able to express your feelings and your thoughts. That is what speaking is all about. And uh, if you talk about today's uh, uh, workshop, I think I would like to say one thing. As teachers, as English teachers, I think Monjoy will also remember uh, that we to enhance the listening skills because the most important thing for the student is that the attention span. Everybody in the class is not the same. You, you cannot uh, simply get the attention of each and every child. So to enhance the skills, when we have comprehension passages, we always give them a passage or we give them a text and we ask them to write the questions. So we thought that why not make it a change instead of giving a passage, we, why don't we narrate a passage or we just read out a passage and ask the children to listen carefully. And after we read the passage, not once, but twice and thrice, and then we give the questions. So that was to enhance the listening skills in the child. These are some of the things as teachers we can do, because that is what we have done. And I really found that these things do work. And children, you know, when they, to make them pay attention, because the attention span of each and every child in the class will never be the same. So how we can connect with the child and make, you know, them improve their listening skills. And speaking skills, of course, it has to be improved and it has to be encouraged. You have to make them feel very confident. It may be that you ask the child to recite a poem in a school assembly. Suddenly the child forgets the line. But that's not the time to tell them that why did you forget? You just clap till they have remembered that. They may not be able to remember the poem. But give them a clap and tell them that's fine. Tomorrow, I think, you'll be able to say 
But today, this much you were able to say, why don't you bring, take out the piece of paper that you have bought? And you can just look at it and say, to make them feel confident about it. You know, so those things about speaking skills, as teachers, we can really encourage the child a lot, I have seen. And this helps them to be confident because many children are not very expressive. They're not able to speak. They rather can write and express. If you ask a child to speak, there may be many in the class who are speaking very confidently, but some of them, the thoughts are, but they can't express. So if you give them to write, I've seen that they express themselves beautifully. So speaking and writing skills come together and teachers, parents, everybody, I think they play a very big part, you know? So I was very happy to listen to Anjum ma'am. They really pointed out some beautiful points about the difference between critical and creative thinking. And there's so much to learn today. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you, Monjoy, for giving me the chance to speak a few lines. They're all stalled words. We learn each and every time. Rachna, ma'am, it's great to see you too. Uh, thank you for giving me this chance. We are indeed a uh, privilege, ma'am, to have you in this event because as an educator with years and years, with decades of experience, I think uh, you really spoke the truth that uh, the need to encourage the students and that is the need of the hour. And even though if they make mistakes as uh, facilitators, as mentors, we should always encourage them. And um, I know better, ma'am, the way you encourage and motivate. So that is always, you know, the positivity, which is like... Uh, if we spread the positivity, then we uh, we can make a change in everyone's life. Even the backbenchers, they will come forward when we motivate them, when we talk uh, something nice about them. Because everybody has talent, some hidden talent. And as um, Anjum Ma'am also spoke about the awareness, about uh, realizing the students' own potentialities to excel. So that is really the need of the hour. So we conduct all these workshops or we are doing all this even just to encourage children to come up, to focus, to focus on their short-term goals so that they can be achievers in the long run. That's, so, one, that's really true, Monjoy. And today, yes. I would like to take another occasion. I'll uh, think, tell Rachna, ma'am, because I have a wonderful story, not today, about communication. At the yes. correct time, to be precise how important it is. It changes one's life. So I have a story. We'll keep that for later. But yes. uh, I often tell everybody when I tell my story, this helps a lot. So yes. those things, you know, because as storytellers, we try to reach out to the children yes. and the audience. We try to give them something, not just tell them a story and that's the end, end of it. That's not now, behind something. Yes, I hope the children who are still there and they will get involved in the activities, they can connect with us and we can conduct further more shows, encouraging them, making them, helping them to come forward because our motto is to spread the light of knowledge and Creative Writing Modern Age will always look into it and we will always encourage the budding talents. So now I would request Sachini to move forward with the next activity, the activity three. Yes, ma'am. So this is going to be the third activity. And here we'll do a listening activity. So we have uh, multiple choice questions. So at first we are showing you all the questions and then we will be uh, playing the video so you can listen to it. And uh, again, we are uh, showing you the questions, all the eight questions, the multiple choice questions. So then we, we give you 10 minutes time, you can answer the question in the chat box where you can mention for, uh, for an example, for number one, C, number two, a, likewise, you can put them, uh, put the answers to the chat box. So here we'll see the questions first.
So I think uh, I'll read out the questions, Sachini. Thank you, ma'am. The first question is, what is John C. suffering from? Typhoid, pneumonia, delirium. Number two, what was the occupation of Behrman? Doctor, writer, artist. Number three, what is the tone of the line when John C. says that she wants to see the leaves fall before it gets dark? Number eight, she is getting impatient and wants to get relieved of her misery. She is angry on Sue as she is not allowed to look outside. This is number B. Number C, she is happy to see the leaves fall. Question number four, which of the sentences is correct? Sue tells John C. that the doctor is confident of her early recovery. Number B, Sue wasn't anxious when she heard John C. counting backwards. Number C, Behrman was a courteous painter who was unkind. I think number five, six, seven, eight. You will take another one minute to have a look at the questions. Children, you can just have a look at the questions and keep that in mind before we proceed with the listening activity. Now, all our earlier speakers, they were talking about the importance of listening activity. Now, you will just listen to this story and then answer these questions. Thank you, Anju, ma'am, Devi, ma'am. So, for being in our show. I think now we can go for the video. Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you for <coughs> inviting me on. I'm very, very grateful for that, to share some of my experience with these young people. Yes, ma'am. You left a message that you would be back soon. So you are here. We are lucky to have you again. Thank you for asking me to come on. I am so grateful for that. I also said that I have to be I've got another platform, an um, online platform to rush off to. Yes, ma'am. So I would have to leave and keep me updated. I thought it was this was on YouTube, but it's not. Is it gonna be on YouTube? Yes, ma'am. Okay, okay. Later on, it's going to be uploaded there. Okay, fine. Okay, then take care. Stay blessed, everybody. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye. I think, Sachini, now you can play the video. Yes, ma'am. Two young women, Nin Su and John C, shared a studio apartment at the top of a three-story building. In November, due to this disease pneumonia, many people died. John C also lay on her bed and the doctor examined her and spoke to Sue in another room. She had one chance in that the same dead, and that chance is for her to want to live. Your friend has made up her mind that she is not going to get well. Has she anything on her mind? She, she wanted to be in the Bay of Naples in Italy someday, said Sue. Well, I'll do that science can do, but whenever my patient begins to count the carriages at her funeral, I take away 50% from the curative power of medicines, the doctor said. After the doctor had gone, Sue went into the workroom and cried. Then she went to Johnson's room with her drawing board. Sue heard the low sound several times repeated. Nine, eight, seven. What is it, dear? asked Sue. Six, said John C. quietly. They are falling faster now. Three days ago, there were almost a hundred. And they are only five. Five what, dear? asked Sue. Please, on the plant, when the last one falls, I must go to. I have looked that for three days. Didn't the doctor tell you? Oh, I never heard of such a thing, said Sue. What have all I believed to do with your getting well? And you used to love them fine. Don't be silly. Why, the doctor told me this morning that your chances for getting well real soon were. Let's see exactly what he said. He said the chances were 10 to 1. Try to eat some soup now. And um, let me go back to my drawing so I can sell it to the magazine and buy food for us. You didn't get any more food. Look, the leaves. They are just four. I want to see the last one fall before it gets.
gets dark and I'll go too. John said here, said Sue. You promised me to keep your eyes closed and not look out the window until I'm done walking. I must have those drawings in by tomorrow. Try to sleep. I must call Mr. Behrman up to be my model for my drawing of an old miner. Don't try to move until I come back. Poor Behrman was a painter who lived in the corner of the world of the apartment with the lake. He earned a little money by serving as a model to artists who could not pay for a professional model. He was a fierce little old man. And so told him about Josie and how she knew that her friend would float away like me. Old Baron was angered at such an idea. Are there people in the world with the foolishness to die because leaves drop off a vine? This is not any place in which one so good as me, Josie, shall lie safe, yelled Bearman. She and Bearman went into the other room. They looked out of the window fearfully at the ivy vine. The next morning, Sue awoke after an hour's sleep. She found Josie with wide open eyes staring at the covered window. Pull up the shade. I want to see, she ordered quietly. Sue obeyed. After the beating rain and furious wind that blew through the night, they yet stood against the wall one ivy leaf. It was the last one on the vine. It was still dark green at the center, but its edges were colored with a yellow. It is the last one, said Josie. I thought it would surely fall during the night. I have to win. It will fall today. Then I should die. He died. Dear, dear, said Sue. Think of me if you don't think of yourself. What would I do without you? But Johnson did not answer. The next morning, when it was light, Johnson demanded that the window shade be raised. The ivy leaf was still there. And then she said to Sue, Be a bad girl. Something has made that last leaf stay there to show me how bad I was. It is wrong to want to die. Please give me some soup. And an hour later, she said, Someday I hope to paint the Bay of Naples. Later in the day, the doctor came and so talked to him in her hobby. Well, I must see another case I have in your building. And Josie, she was quite well now. You know, this bear man, his name is some kind of an artist, I believe. Pneumonia, too. He's an old weak man and his case is severe. There is no hope for him. But he goes to the hospital to buy it to ease his pain. The next day, the doctor said to Sue, She is out of danger. You work, nutrition, and care now, that's all. Later that day, Sue came to the bed where Josie lay and put one arm around her. I have something to tell you. Mr. Behrman died of pneumonia today in the hospital. He was sick only two days, Sue said. They found him the morning of the first day in his room downstairs, helpless with pain. His shoes and clothing were completely wet and icy cold. They could not imagine where he had been on such a terrible night. And then they found the letter still. They found the letter that had been moved from its place and art supplies and a painting board with green and yellow colors mixed on it. And look out the window, dear, at the last I believe on the wall. Didn't you wonder why it never moved when the wind blew? Oh, darling. Darling, it's Behrman's masterpiece. He painted it on the night. night when the last leaf fell. All right, so uh, I think everyone heard the audio. Uh, Monjur ma'am, do we need to play it again? Okay, uh, the questionnaire is there. I think that will suffice. The students, I think you have heard the audio. I think now the questions that are given on the screen, you can answer 
in your chat box. There was some actually background sound. So some of the students were just uh, texting that they were finding it difficult. Oh, should we uh, play again, ma'am? Uh... Uh, any one of your students? Do you want it to be played? We have seen Gazi's answer there. So would you like to say something? Yes, any of you? We have participants. Adrika, Akshara. Akshara, you can unmute yourself. Um, yes. Was it clear to you all? Was it audible? Some background um, noise? Um, yes, yes ma'am. Okay, so you all have heard the audio, so couldn't have a look at the video because the questionnaire was here. So I hope so. If you all can proceed, then it's all right. Otherwise, we won't waste time again playing the video. Can we proceed? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, Sachini, I hope so that will do. Okay, ma'am. So, we can give the 10 minutes for them to ask the question. Yes. No, already the questionnaire was there. So, they won't be needing 10 minutes. We uh, have okay. Gaji Navid's answer. And Amira, we can see her answers as well. Because the activity became a bit easy, you know, Sachini. They saw the questionnaire <laughs> for quite a long time. Okay, so they don't need any more time. Yeah, next time we have to give something more complicated in a complicated <laughs> manner. What say, students? Amira, you are ready with the answers? Yes, ma'am. Yes, very good. A vibrant, yes, jolly girl as usual. So I think everyone can put the answers to the uh, chat box for that would be easy for us to yes. uh, find yes. the answers. Yes. As we are getting late, many of our guests have already left. We have Grand Tour Sir with us since it's morning. So he's sparing his time with us. Ma'am, is it possible to showcase the questions again? Yes, sure. Thank you, ma'am. Educational and fun. Yes. Educational fun. A nice caption, yes. sir. A nice caption. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we'll keep that in mind next time. Sachini, just take a note of that. Educational fun. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> After a love, poet speaks in compressed words. <laughs> I uh, Noted I had a uh, yes, a poet always knows no how to compress a story and make it short to a four <laughs> line stanza as well. Sometimes I uh, go on a little bit in my poetry, but uh, I try to keep it <laughs> short. short and crisp. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think Rajput, sir, he also left, but he was ready for this interactive uh, session with the children. No, I'm here. Oh, Rajput, sir, you are there. Yeah, so, yeah. I, some guests have come, so I was there with the guests, and again, okay. I was listening the thing. So that is very I was not interrupting. But okay. yes, yeah. Okay. So many students have already left. Yes, I saw that. Very few people, only 18, 18 we are yeah. here. If you take out seven of us, then it is only 11. Yes. So we had many children joining in from different schools. Yeah, correct. So we were planning of keeping more such activities, very interesting activities. But I think as it is becoming late, 
and they had uh, some of them had texted they had tuitions and uh, other assignments as well so they couldn't continue agree 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 mm -hmm. so next time when you are making it make it uh, like uh, short yeah and uh, yeah, i even even i also took almost 20 minutes right no, so sir. the yeah so the timing part has to be very well informed to us all of us so that we should yes. be crisp in our talk 10 minutes 5 minutes whatever it is right mm. and then uh, so that is there and then we can finish it one and a half hour of time there is better so all everybody will have that engagement to mm. be a part of that i personally feel about it yes sir true but i think the children they are enjoying and listening to all the stall words was really enlightening for them they came yeah. to know about different things the art of public speaking from you poetry from grant was sir yes. and of course the other keynote speakers as they talked about uh, told us about the listening skill the importance of writing listening speaking everything how to, this, yes, how to overcome stage fear so mm -hmm. all these are great aspects uh, to talk about so and so informative it is always good uh, Manji, uh, sister that uh, if the student they start interacting because that's the reason we have to make the session uh, yeah it's very short so they will, yeah. it, otherwise it's becoming a monologue i was also inspecting because there's all a monologue is going on yeah right they must be enjoying it but if they will interact then yes. it will be a true understanding from both the ends. Okay. So we'll see to it, sir. If students, they are engaging like the ones who are now uh, over here still in this program, that means these are the ones who always enjoy, uh, who will be with us in the programs. So we can have interactive sessions with them. Correct. With stalwarts like y'all as the guides. What do you think, students? You can comment. You can leave your messages in the chat box so that we come to know about your feedbacks regarding the program. The mentors whom you choose and how you like to proceed. There is one girl is there, Kushbu. She left. Yeah, she left. She has a tuition now. A tuition, sir, had come right in, sir. She texted me. She left a message. Why I took her name? Because uh, uh, in her, uh, you can see DP here, showing mm -hmm. the error. Then okay. She had added it like that only. She would have taken it from the net and she would have added it. So okay. When you are talking to her next time, yeah, that uh, such DPs should not be put by any of the anybody. Error means okay. this is a mistake. There is a gap. So some okay. some very different type of the DP has to be added in that. Okay. And this is one of the things which is very important. This yes. Error is a negative part. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't give the positivity feeling about it. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Definitely, yeah, it can so, be. Why are we, I'm saying by, by the time you finish, I am saying because we are our every cells of the body, whatever we say, speak, grasp, mm. it will just come back to us. So mm. that's why I always, as a strong believer, that we should talk only positive words, positivity, right, which is very, very important. True, sir. Yes, over to uh, the children and over to you. Yes, sir. Thank you. So, I think all are done with it. Yes, ma'am. I think uh... Shreya Shri Chaudhary, she has commented. It's a fascinating event. And she liked the way the guest had spoken. We are getting more answers, ma'am. Yes.
Amaira and Adarika, they both are sisters. No, sir. <laughs> yes, they both, both are sisters. Ask. Okay. Amaira? Yes. No, sir. Yes. We're not sisters. They're not sisters. Oh, my God. But Adarika, Kashyap, and Amaira, Amaira Kashyap, and your face also resembles. One is very chubby chubby and one is little less chubby. <laughs> but you are from which place? Amaira and Adrika? Amaira, kindly introduce yourself. Yeah, unmute. Ma'am, please give me just one second. Actually, someone is dialing me. I just need to tell them I'm busy. Oh, very oh. nice. Very nice. And what about Adrika? Adrika, are you there? Then I can see Jennifer on the screen. Jennifer, would you like to say something? Your response to the event, or you I, have heard uh, Rajput sir speak? I really like the um, way they speak. I really like the event. I was actually very happy to say, see this uh, event, to be a part of this event. I really liked it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you, dear. It's my pleasure, ma'am. Okay. So, very nice. We hope to see you in our further events. Yes, yes? ma'am. I would be there. Okay, thank you. Epshita, I can see your smiling face in the screen. So, the art of public speaking, were you influenced by it? So, how to overcome stage fear? You want to speak something? Mm. No. Let's die for that. Okay. So, anybody? Anybody from the children, uh, from the students? We have Harshita. Harshita Borwa. Yes, ma'am. Would you like to say something, Harshita? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, especially I would like to thank you and all the co-hosts for providing us a platform to listen to all those inspirational speakers and to learn something related about the communication skills and listening skills. Okay. Thank you so much, Harshita, for being in the show. And in our upcoming events, I think you will again connect and collaborate with us. Thank you, Harshita. Sure, ma'am. Thank you. Then next we have Shri. Would you love to say something? Yes, ma'am. First of all, I would like to thank you for letting me know about this uh, workshop. And I am very thankful to the guests for letting us know about all of experiences and we also learn uh, since about you all and uh, they were very inspirational and motivating so I would like to thank everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So we would like to have you more in our shows and you know uh, Shreya Shri, she is a very good classical singer and she has won many awards both in the, the state and as well as uh, in the national level also. So we are very lucky to have Shreya Shri, students, so, such talented students with us. Thank you, ma'am. And the art of public speaking is equally very important, Shreya Shri. So yes, I hope you are liking the sessions. Okay. So yes. next, yes, thank you. So next we have Nikki Nishthakwar, a class 11 student from Holy Child School, Guwahati. So Nikki, would you like to say something?
So Nikki. Okay. Next we have Bidisha. Hello, ma'am. Ma'am, thank you so much for giving me a chance to say a few lines. So mm -hmm. yes, ma'am, we enjoyed a lot here and thank you for organizing a workshop. And yeah, they all inspired us a lot. And it was really interesting to do the activities here. Okay. Thank you so much, Badesha. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So we have uh, Gaji, Gaji Navid Ahmed. So Gaji, would you like to say something? Yes, ma'am. The event was uh, very nice. It was very inspirational. I really liked how the honored guests uh, spoke and taught us about public speaking and listening skills. Uh -huh. It was yeah. really enjoyable. So if you all have any queries to ask, so y'all can do so, Gaji. So we have Rajput sir, we have Grandpa sir still with us. So y'all are really privileged to have such tall words. And y'all are getting this opportunity to interact with them. So if you have any queries, you can ask before we proceed with the next activity. Anybody else would love to speak? Adrika? Okay. Okay, then. Sachini, we can move on with the next activity. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Okay, so uh, this is the fourth activity. This is uh, for writing, listening, sorry, writing, thinking, and speaking skills. So I've given a picture uh, here. So based on that, describing the picture, you can write four lines of prose or four lines of stanzas. So after you've uh, written your description, uh, just speak about it based on what you have written. So... You can start uh, your activity. So write it uh, within like five minutes and speak about it as everyone finishes it. There is one typo error in writing. The spelling couldn't be corrected. W-R-I-T-I-N-G. So this is the last activity for y'all. An illustration of uh, can you do the writing spelling. Yes, ma'am. The spelling of writing. Yes, we can just correct that. Sachini. There was an error, a typo error. error. Yeah, typing. Yeah. Thank you, Rajput, sir, for being with us, for sparing your valuable time and you, becoming sir. a part of our show. Thank you so much, sir. It was a privilege to have you on the show. And we look for further collaboration with you because the students always enjoy listening to such tall words. 
My pleasure. So, my pleasure. Very happy. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank, thank you. you so much. Bye. 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 Good night to everybody. Thank Good you. Night. Dr. Thank Ashna, you, sir. Ashna, 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 uh, Grant, sir, and all the lovely students, all the lovely students. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good God night. Bless. Stay blessed. Good, good night. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. It's so nice to see the eagerness of the students to participate, Rachna ma'am. So see, these are the true students, you know. So I think that they will be like in our future events also, they'll be a part of the show because many students from other schools had also joined in, but they left. So obviously they had other assignments. But the way they are stuck and the way they are participating, it means a lot. So as you keep on writing, let me also remind you, children, that today's workshop is just an endeavor to make the interested students have a glimpse on the art of public speaking, which was enlightened with valuable insights from the great international speakers. And I hope, dear students, you have enjoyed listening to them as the way we too were left mesmerized listening to their way of speaking. So we'll be organizing more such events and the ones who are interested can join us. You can leave your names and you can join our platform always because we go on conducting such workshops, events, be it storytelling events, or be it poetry recitations. So there are many upcoming events, even catering to grammar classes. So you are free to join in anytime. It's my honor, sir, grand sir, you have Left such a beautiful compliment, such a sweet compliment. It's an honor to me. And we'll always. I had a. Happy we'll always, yes, uh, thank you so much. We'll always love to have you in our shows. In such a short notice, you had agreed to be uh, in our show, and that means a lot. We need positive minded people like y'all who always have the uh, eagerness to do something out of the box. I, I, I could paraphrase, paraphrase what I just wrote. I'm just honored. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, just this was a wonderful experience, you know, uh, and see the kids getting involved in learning and having fun doing it. It's just wonderful, wonderful. Everybody yeah. here, everybody is just uh, mm. uh, is for the kids, for the learning and for the fun. It, it, it was great. It was great. Yeah. Learning should be fun, sir. 
yes when exactly, students, exactly yes when students have that interest and learning becomes quite easy yep like when they I, like uh, the teacher when they love the teacher that subject itself becomes easy for them exactly so it, it, it yes yes i agree yes i'm sorry after you I had this, uh, I was in ninth grade, I was 14, that's way back. Uh, I had this teacher, uh, math. I went up to her and asked her, uh, can she help me with this problem? She turned around and looked me straight in the eye and said, what are you, stupid or something? I'm 14 mm -hmm. years old, you know? So yeah. that was obviously, it was a bad experience, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, that's true, sir. It always leaves that impact in our mind. It affected me. I started ditching school from that point on. Why? And I kept thinking, why should I bother? Nobody cares, you know. Mm -hmm. So I've learned otherwise. So here I am. <laughs> yes, it all worked out. And it's always a two-way process. Like yeah. our earlier speakers had also spoken. Yeah. So yeah. we learn from our children, little values. So we learn a lot, oh. so. And it's wonderful. This, this, it's. I'm. You're never too old or too young to learn. Uh, you know, and you know, at a certain age, it, it's yes. take it. Uh, you know, it, you know, we learn from. Uh, if you touch fire, it burns. You usually never do that again. But that's an easy one. Now you have to learn other things. You know, uh, uh, in school and from people, from experience. And there's certainly nothing wrong from uh, learning from children. It's wonderful. It's learning. How wonderful is that? <laughs> yes, sir. So. We have Gaji over here. He has also left such beautiful comments, sir. It means a lot, the sweet compliments. So they are wonderful speakers also, sir. They're so presentable the way they speak. Gaji, we have, is always eager to participate in any events of the school. So... Thank you, so looking into his eagerness, the moment he heard about a workshop, he was just, he just agreed and he wanted to be a part of the event. So we have many children and today many of them couldn't join in, but we'll uh, organize more such events. And I also had a talk with Sachini. So from Sri Lanka also, many were supposed to join, but due to exams, they couldn't do yes, that. Yes, ma'am. It's the exam time here. So I think most of them couldn't join because of that. Yes. So we were planning likewise with Rachna Mem also. We were planning like we will have more such events where we'll do this collaboration with students from other countries. Then uh, there is this blending of culture and exchange of ideas. And so, you know, when we see those happy faces of the children, and even when we feel like we are, we can do something extra for the children, we feel too good, sir. Exactly, exactly. It's, yeah, I, I keep repeating myself. It's fun, it's fun to learn. I mean, I, I'm a lot older when I was younger. Uh, yeah, school, school, yuck, and all that, but uh, I have so much fun, so. <laughs> So I have to leave though. I have a, a, some more uh, uh, errands I have to run. Okay. I'm going to be on later so I could see the end of it. This is all recorded, correct? Correct. This is recorded. Yes. Rachna, ma'am. So I can I can watch it later. Uh, again, yes. thank you all for for all your input into my soul, into mm -hmm. my heart. I appreciate it very much. Thank you, sir, for your patient hearing right from the start of our program till the end. We are honored, sir, and we look forward for you joining again uh, for the events, our upcoming events. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Grant Was. Thank you very much, everybody. It's really good to see, see you all. And, and after a long down. time, you have joined us, and I'm really grateful that you have finally made it. I was waiting to yeah. meet you from a long time. I uh, I wrote a, a, a I was talking to Madame, uh, Madame Sarma and uh, I was telling her I I getting better with my anxiety so I'm kind of uh, I still have the stage fright and all that but I I have 
a little more control. That's why I'm here right now. So I'm not as scared, <laughs> if you will. This is a stress uh, buster, sir. This kind of programs are a stress buster. This kind of programs are a stress buster. It will relieve you from all the stress. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I feel that. So, you know, I, I, I'm staying here as long as I can and I'm enjoying it. It's just wonderful. Again, but uh, yeah, I do have anxiety and uh, I tend to talk better in, in type words than I do in uh, speaking words too. So I stumble a few times, but I, uh, I'm i here, like I said, and, and I, I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad I showed up and uh, uh, I will continue uh, doing my best to keep my anxiety down more so I can enjoy more of these these events. I love them. I truly do. So thank you all once again. And thank keep you, writing. Sarah. Do keep writing, Grandmas. We, we don't want to oh, miss I will. your uh, poetry. Your poems are very inspiring and captivating. Really, really, Rachna, ma'am. Yes. So, you know, when I recited one of his poems, I got so nice uh, feedbacks from everyone. It was the poem Into the Night, sir. Do you remember? Into the Night. Yeah. So it was such a beautiful, it was really a superb poem, sir. Someday again, when we are again into some kind of uh, webinars or meet, I'll surely read out the poem if Rachna ma'am permits, of course. Surely, surely. We need such motivating poems. Yes. And the Grant Wasser always writes such captivating. Yeah. I recently he had uh, written a few poems. I didn't see much. I keep on reading Into the, some of his poems. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, please, please go ahead. <laughs> and the way he leaves the compliments, always brimming with positivity. And that makes your day. You smile to yourself. Yes. Every single comment of Grant was is uh, filled with so much of emotions. Yes. As if uh, we are so nearby, though poles yes. apart. Peace, smiles, yes. blessings. <laughs> and with all the emojis, you feel so valued. Thank yes. you. I'm... Uh... I'm uh, uh I'm I'm becoming shy now. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I um there's still a part of me that uh uh I don't feel like I deserve these accolades. A part of me, a little part of me. It used to be, you know, <laughs> like that, but uh um with my poetry page and stuff, and I'm learning to accept the uh the comments, the positive as well as the negative. You know, I can handle both, but uh um to Every time I get a positive uh, uh, comment from either one of you or anybody else, it's just I take a moment to think, do I deserve that? And I tell myself, yes, of course you deserve. It. You know, of course you do. You've come a long way. So growing and growing and growing, you know, and uh, part of acceptance is, you know, the uh, the accolades, the, com the comments of uh, you do good work. And, you know, they ask me for how to uh, write, a, write a poem. And I love it. It's never happened to me in my life before, you know. So it's uh, I'm accepting it with uh, with a big old smile. So thank you yes, all. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for making it. You're very welcome. You all have a let's see, it's your night time, so you all have a wonderful evening. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nine o'clock a.m. here, so my day is just starting. I had to go out earlier and walk the dog and stuff like that. So yes, uh, have a rocking take care day of ahead. You'll have your Pardon breakfast. Me? We'll have, have your art dinner. I, I just want to have a rocking day ahead. <laughs> I uh, I fed the dog. I haven't fed myself yet, though. So I, I, I come uh, last. So I got uh, I got to eat something and uh, do some work. I, today is my my Sunday. I go to work tomorrow. It's my Monday tomorrow. So uh, I got to get some rest for that. So uh, I'm I'm full of energy. Thank you. I'm very pumped up. Thank you all again. Take care. Thank, Thank you, sir. sir. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, all of you. Bye, sir. We'll share the YouTube link with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again, sir. <laughs>
Okay. We'll keep in there touch. We <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, sir. Our children are just loving the interaction with you as they are just texting me. So great, sir. In our next upcoming program, also, I think you will be there and you ought to be there. Isn't it, Rajna, ma'am? Yes, yes. We want such motivating people. Yes. So finally, we have come to an end of our activity for and also our program, our event. So the children who are still there and they had written wonderful lines. So ma'am, uh, are we giving them time to speak about what they have written? Yeah, we can give. So that will also account to their way of speaking, that is speaking skills, as we are involving thinking, writing, listening, and speaking skills together. So as the winners, uh, are we going to tell, announce the names of the winners today, Rajna ma'am? Yeah, we will announce the names of the winners. Uh, Sachinay will be doing that. And uh -huh. uh, everyone is going to get a certificate from Creative yes. Writing Mod. All the participants also. Winners yes. will get a winning certificate and all the participants will get a participation certificate, which is valued in the national level also. Yes. So that's something which is very great. So that's as it's becoming too late, I think, students, you can just stay for another five to ten minutes. So, Rajna, ma'am? Yeah. They have written, I saw a couple of uh, captions. It was very nice. And the lines which they are writing, it's great to read. The cat is looking forward to the future. The cat is looking the forward. Us. The cat is us, looking into the future. Yes. In the illustration, the cat is us, looking yes. forward to the future. Yes. Yes, they are, in fact, looking into the future. Very nice, very innovative, in fact. Jennifer, yeah. Yes. So everybody has a different perception when they look at particular things. Yes, so, it changes. The perception keeps on changing. Yes. So when you can express in that way, it is uh, very nice to see. Very nice. And in such a little span of time, they are coming up with beautiful captions, beautiful write-ups. So that prompt action the prompt thinking skills, that counts a lot. Amara, Atika, Bidisha, Gaji, Harshita, Ipshita, Adrika. So we have actually found... Yes. Everyone is writing very nicely. But yes, of course, when we select winners, it becomes difficult to select the winners. <laughs> we are giving every activity only two win uh, winners. We are making only two winners from every activity. Okay. So I think uh, Reshna ma'am will need more time. So until then, we can announce the winners of the other activities. Is it okay, ma'am? Yes, you yes. can start. I'm sharing with you. Uh, I think the last two uh, which I've shared, that is. I think, ma'am, I'm going to talk a little bit about, about Shana as well because we have to remind her today because uh, she's um, actually a mentor for the kids' soul. So she's actually an asset to our CWMA as well because uh, she's the youngest uh, storyteller, the mentor, and 
also the winner of 32 national and international level awards. So she has also been associated with our club um, as an active member. So I would like to make this a moment uh, to wish her all the very best with her future endeavors. And also I would like to um, remind all my uh, other co-members uh, who are uh, supporting for all these activities to make this success. So uh, thank you all. And uh, we'll see. Uh, before we go to the best speaker, I'll announce the other. Uh, winners of the activities. So the first activity which we did as the prompt thinking, um, we've got Shri Shriyashri Chaudhry and Navid Ahmed as the winners. Oh, very good. Very good. And uh, also uh, Professor Rajput also had written some amazing uh, adjectives. So we've got him also included. As, an, uh, as a guest as well. So uh, for the captivating captions, we have um, Jennifer Ahmed and uh, Kushbu Firdousi. Firdousi. Yes. So uh, there very yes. And uh, the listening activity, we have uh, again Kushbu and Sriyashri Chaudhary. Oh, great. Thank you. Great. So the last activity is over to Aisha and to Josh. She's, I think, going through the. So the toughest one you're giving me. <laughs> yes, the ma tough, difficult one to announce. Because there I saw many of them are writing very nicely. So I decided, just now I was just thinking, that we should have three prizes instead yeah. of two for the last one. Yes. Wow. And you know, ma'am, the ones who stayed with us till now, they yes. also deserve accolades and they also deserve praises, ma'am. Yes. They are yes. Uh, true, very surely, surely. Yes. They and are the ones who are really uh, participating. Yes. yes. They are so involved. Yes. And they want, and we'll be keeping for them. Actually, yes. uh, Manjuri, the problem yes. is that you're in. Uh, Mumbai, uh, yeah. we have exams going on for the students. Yeah. So the principals were a little reluctant to send. Two, three kids had joined from Bilibong High School when they left mm -hmm. because they were preparing for their tomorrow's for ex day exam. exams. Yeah. So, so they left in between. Mm -hmm. So uh, actually, uh, when the exams from the north finishes, exams from the west starts. Mm -hmm. And the exams from the West finishes, exams from the North starts. Yeah. So a little bit of this thing to club it up. Our summer trip was, was over last month. So yeah. now the schools have reopened and uh, here we are having all exams. Teachers are busy preparing question papers or mm -hmm. correcting papers. And there it's summer vacation. So yeah. Yeah, last month I got a lot of calls, ma'am, do something, please for our kids and uh, this was the problem but anyway no not an issue we mm -hmm. can have a combined uh, this thing yeah. right now if we are having for the, the students from the north the next mm -hmm. time we can have it uh, together combined yeah. with all the students separately all the winners probably every student can meet and interact so it is knowledge exchange program which we can have um, and that can be organized even students from uh, the West can go to the North and stay. Yes. And actually, we are planning students from Sri Lanka to come to India and mm. we'll do something here together with the Indian kids. So That's we wonderful. were already planning with the principal. Uh, uh, we had also visited in Sri Lanka and together we had planned. Mm. So some, Sampat sir is also very ready to come to India and collaborate with the Indian kids and we can have knowledge exchange. So we can stay with the kids and even the kids when they go to Sri Lanka, they can have knowledge exchange there also. That's so, really so, wonderful, ma'am. We have actually collaborated with uh, Indian uh, International Language uh, School, uh, which is uh, Mr. Sampat uh, Narayan is the 
principal there. So we had collaborated. So I can tell the students now, if you're interested, we can plan it up with Manjuri ma'am from Assam. She can uh, take the kids and uh, bring them to Sri Lanka. And uh, we can go and stay with the students in their home and learn the way what they eat, how they stay, the Sri Lankan food. Already I had tasted. Yes. And the uh, hospitality. Sachin <laughs> is already there yes, to guide us. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And I had it's enjoyed my last time. Already so uh, all your students are out there. Are you all interested? So you can come with Manjuri, ma'am, as an excursion trip uh, and learn the way Sri Lankan people are staying, the simple life and high thinking. That is what I saw in Sri Lankan people mostly. They have a very, very simple life, but the thinking is very high. So I just enjoyed in Sri Lanka a lot. And of course, as I told, some Sampatsar also is planning to make a visit to India so we can go directly to Assam yeah. with the kids who are joined here. Yeah, and, uh, we can enjoy the Asimis lifestyle and uh, Sri Lankan students can learn how they live and what they eat, their culture, tradition. And so it will be a culture exchange as well as knowledge exchange program also. To, instead of staying in hotels and resorts and uh, so you can have staying together the kids and the kids and uh, nicely exchange uh, so this this is a plan for creative writing also but uh, let's see how it moves there so if we have such amazing kids with us and their parents also working for the development of the knowledge and to enhance the skills we should have such knowledge exchange program. So I would request the parents to actively take part uh, through a, those who have not joined, but will see the video later on. Please encourage your children for activities like this, because I tell you that the curriculum based education gives only 40% of the knowledge, but activity based uh, knowledge increases your 60% skill development. Saichini so herself is a student from Sri Lanka, but her skills have developed a lot. I know the way she has matured herself, uh, and uh, you will all not believe she is a student, she's studying, she's preparing for her exams, but still her videos which she makes, creativity, it's uh, boundless, limitless, she's crossed. The way she speaks yeah. initially, she was uh, very this thing about speaking, but then slowly, slowly she came out. Now she's hosting the shows for Creative Writing Modern Age. So children, and I would request all the parents that please encourage your children. If you have teachers like Manjuri ma'am, Veena ma'am, who are encouraging, please support them by active, actively taking part in such events. And of course, we have that form open for you. You can plan out your own events also here. We give the freedom of uh, thought, expression with your teachers. You all can plan, but only we need your participation and actively like today I saw all the kids. So without wasting much time, the last event of the day, I have actually many, uh, but I'll select just uh, quite a, uh, just three of them. Um, I think the first one should be Jennifer. I Je Jennifer got a lot of uh, yes uh, award. Uh, Jennifer, already. In all the three, I think Jennifer's name was taken. Okay, Jennifer, very excited. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. So nice Jennifer to see is too smile. much excited. Yes. Then uh, second, we have Ipshita Bhattacharji. Ipshita, congratulations. Ipshita. Is there? Ipshita is there? Ipshita is there, ma'am. Ipshita, can we have you yes, on the yes, screen? Yes. Yeah, yes. I can see you. Yeah, Ipshita, congratulations. And then we have the third one, Vidisha Saikya. Vidisha is yeah. also there. Vidisha, can we have you on the screen? Yes, ma'am. Another very vibrant speaker, you know, Rajna, ma'am. She's oh. so active. She's always teeming with life. The moment she heard it, she was just so curious to be oh. on the show. Wow. 
So that, such that's amazing. That's so nice. That's so nice. But actually, yeah. I would like to mention another one more also. Uh, but I couldn't uh, take because three we have to take. But I really liked this um, uh, Amira Kashyap. Yeah, Amira Kashyap okay. has also written. Thank I you so much. And she is also a very active and vibrant child, ma'am. She's always jovial and always eager to present any programs. Even like the Gazi's also. But yes, Ga Gazi. Gazi is writing from the beginning. I've been seeing all the activities is actively taking part. And most hmm. of the time is uh, involved is totally. One. Yeah, his answer comes first. Uh, very, very prompt answering. Also. Thank you, ma'am. So I really loved all the kids, Manjuri. No words yes. to say. Though it went a little longer, we can mm -hmm. divide it if the kids come in regularly. So we can yeah. have uh, regular sessions. So kids, you have to interact with Manjuri, ma'am. And uh, send, uh, we will have regular and maybe shorter ones, if not mm -hmm. so big together. And we can have only one uh, activity in a day. And you can join in with Manjuri, ma'am. And we will record that and put it in the YouTube channel later on. You can see how you're speaking. See, uh, putting it up in a channel is only to make you aware that where you could have spoken a little more properly so that the next time when you speak in, uh, you can change a lot. So that's the main intention of putting it. Right now, we are not going live. So we will be putting it in the recorded ones in our YouTube channel. Uh, but you need to develop your skills. That's the main intention which creative writing always tries to bring in unique things. And as I told you, we have our external director of external affairs, your uh, Sechini from uh, Sri Lanka. She herself had developed a lot. And in spite of being a student herself, she is doing multiple things together. And I tell you, this will help you a lot in developing all your skills. So you should grab the opportunity whenever you get it from your teachers. Take it. Yes. Uh, take it and develop your skills. And, it's really and the cool. way the way Sachini writes her poems. So yes. appealing, ma'am. It's very she, nice. Uh, writing, she, she had it innate in her. That was nothing yes. done to her. Uh, that she was doing. Only her speaking and uh, her confidence level, uh, I have seen her growing like anything. Uh, so when Thank she used to join... She used to just join and then go away. Just join in and go away. But this was there. She never missed a chance. So that is what I like uh, when uh, I've seen students uh, growing up. So I would request all the students who are hearing us and not join. Please interact with Manjuri, ma'am. And uh, get connected with Creative Writing Modern Age. And uh, we can come up with smaller uh, events also. I know it's late night for the kids. And we will enjoy uh, this. You have a full month of summer vacation, so we can have such uh, events in smaller levels also. And in between, we can invite one guest who can speak it up and share with you about the skills which we are planning to be. Okay, so I hope all the certificates, I'll share it with Manjuri, ma'am, and you will uh, get the certificates. If you can download and click a photograph and send it to us, it will be amazing. And those of you who know Manjuri, ma'am, you should go to her place and uh, click photograph with her also, with the certificate. So uh, that would be more interesting so that we can plan the next trip to Sri Lanka for knowledge exchange program, along with Manjuri, ma'am, taking the lead. Educational uh, fun. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> thank you. Educational, Educational fun. fun. Yes. yes. Many words came into our vocabulary, Sachini. Yes, yes. ma'am. So I will, uh, kids, I'll share all the certificates with the Manjuri ma'am and she will share it with uh, your parents uh, in your WhatsApp and uh, accordingly, it was an amazing event. Thanks to Manjuri and uh, coming ahead with the end of the program. I hope uh, all those who have not received as winner, but I tell you, you all are winners. Coming to this platform means you are winners. So you have made it Utilize the chance, so don't worry, not today, then tomorrow, you'll surely get because we have events after events, so you cannot miss a chance from going away with, uh, without awards or trophies. We also have, uh, with the trophies and prizes, 
So do get connected with Manjuri, ma'am. She will guide you. How you can get trophies also. This time we are giving the certificates. Next time we'll be doing it with trophies and medals also. Right, Manjuri, ma'am? Yes. So we are going to keep it, uh, only keep the competitions. Yes. So today we had quite a lot of Workshop, speakers. But uh, yeah. Yeah. So many speakers joined in and it was very informative and valuable, I think, yes. for the students also. They got a lot to learn. About Vilma ma'am had from Brazil had joined in and Vilma yeah. ma'am had spoken a lot about the body language and the speaking skills, stage uh -huh. fear, which uh -huh. uh, you have to avoid. Once you get the video link, uh, Manjuri ma'am, do share it with them. They should yeah. uh, uh, see that and you can comment. Even the guests will reply to your comments. For those who have not asked questions, you can write it in the comment section and uh, clear your doubts. Main intention of this program was that any doubts you have regarding your speaking and listening skills, you can clear it up. Uh, if you couldn't talk with the guest, write one-on-one, uh, -on -one, though the intention was there, uh, but yeah. you can still write it in the comment section. Our guests will reply to you. So don't worry about that. Uh, Manjuri ma'am will share the YouTube link with you as soon as it is uploaded. And uh, the certificates will be shared with you. Today, actually, Rajput sir also joined in late because means afterwards again he joined in because he was ready. He was very eager to answer the questions of the kids. Yes, Even yes, I yes. had a few questions to ask him because he uh, talked about the art of public speaking. Yes, which, these are the main important things we all need to know. We'll keep another session sometimes when he's free with Rajput, sir. Uh, so, children, will you be interested in joining in another session with Rajput, sir? Yes, ma'am. Interactive session when y'all can also ask questions. Y'all will have many questions regarding uh, profession, uh, profession. I think uh, Manjuri, they should have an interview with Rajput, sir. These kids should only take interview. And you yeah. should be there to guide them. Yes. So yeah, if y'all are interested in who, uh, means today you saw the list of guests. So any guest or any speakers that uh, left a kind of influence in you and you were inspired by the words of the speaker, you can uh, just give us a feedback. So we'll get in touch with the speaker and and uh, y'all right? will be the ones to put yes, the question. Yes, yes, they will be the ones to conduct the interview. I want you all to host also slowly, slowly. And you all should be able to interview Sechini, uh, who is from Sri Lanka. So I want the kids to ask questions. And let me see how they frame questions. And what do they want to ask about Sri Lanka from Sechini? Yeah. So all the kids uh, can get connected and learn the art of speaking. It's Papa. very important. Papa, my second <laughs> Bidisha, that's Bidisha, I think. Uh, Bidisha, Bidisha. <laughs> yes. I think, you know, ma'am, all these kids, they deserve yes, yes, another okay. certificate yes. for staying till so late. We have Shreya, Shri Gaji, Evshita, Jennifer, Amaira, then Harshita just left. So yeah, Harshita was also there. Jennifer yes. Just so, now she left. Hmm. So they, okay, we will anyway, make. Uh, we will give them a yes. certificate also for active participation, not only yes. participation. Active, active participation. Part. We will give yes. it to them. So till the end, they were there and interactive making the session. So okay. Very lovely, Manjuri. You conduct more such events with these amazing kids, and yes. we can give them uh, loads of uh, awards also uh, together with their participation. Yeah, in it's the so last two teaching. years we had, ma'am, uh, Akshara, then Akshita, Anushka. Today they stayed for a little time, but they are also wonderful speakers and participating in our programs also. Yes, it had yes, benefited yes. them a lot. They have learned, they have grown with us. I think, Amira, you have heard about Akshara. She had won the prize in storytelling in the national level, and she is also actively associated with our organization. So... And that's something quite great. Um, yeah, we Ma all can. She had won first place in storytelling. I was also a part of the storytelling competition. She had won first place. Yes. So, so we will have international uh, competitions also. But before going to the international, you need to be ready with participating in such session. 
that is why once you are a part of creative writing uh, you will get such uh, important things also in your in store so we also have uh, a lot of talks talk shows also so you can be a part of it just get connected with manjuri ma'am and i want to thank we are coming towards the vote of thanks and i want to thank all the amazing guests who had joined in though they had left because uh, they all have their work and the time zones are different so i want to thank everyone from the bottom of my heart and my wonderful hosts for the day the director of cwma manjuri sharma thank you so much uh, for conducting it so meticulously and from the beginning the way the day when we had planned that we will do something for the kids uh, it was like you went to the, to the second level and of course interacting with uh, everyone inviting the small to little little kids and i uh, also inviting i gave manjuri everything to do so she did it so nicely i'm so happy so happy that we have teachers committed like this and uh, of course the students are really uh, you know i can say that you should be proud of having an english teacher like manjuri ma'am and uh, it's really uh, pleasant uh, to have manjuri in amidst us and going to Sachini, Sachini is always a lovely soul. So I know when Manjuri said, "Can I speak to Sachini?" I said, "Of course." Sachini is uh, on and off only just her exam should not be there. Then otherwise she is always with us. She never, she's never with the no, uh, but she's always yes, and she will really help us out. The creative, the creative thing, the concept, all she does it at a click of a moment. and she does it so amazingly that i got so many offers from other uh, groups that we want also sachini so let us see how we can share her uh, qualities uh, with others so thank you so much sachini the way thank you thank you, you. made the videos in the beginning and presenting it uh, it's amazing thanks thanks My once pleasure, thank and you. last but not the least the amazing little kids who had joined in and in spite of being your summer vacation we saw you actively taking part and developing your speaking and listening skills so we will have storytelling competitions in the coming time we'll have lot of um, other skill development so do con stay connected and do join in when your teacher says to join in it will be fun based i tell you nothing will be we can have drawing captions uh, we can have one liners so it will be amazing sessions but only manjuri we can make it smaller for the kids then they yes. can say some of them and then later on we can have a combined uh, with all the kids with uh, uh, international kids also so that yes. we can give them international certificates also now they are yes. getting uh, uh, since uh, they are getting uh, you know government registered certificate so this certificate of uh, attending the workshop is also going to help and some those who got the winning certificate of course it's a very very valuable so uh, it's government recognized so there is no problem we are very happy to have the kids you can conduct many such more events thank you so much thank yes ma'am yes samaira can i say something yes of course recently in our school marial we uh, we had this workshop where students from Class six, different different students. We were chosen for creative writing, and from that we were chosen. Like a few of us were chosen for drawing and writing to compete. Not compete. We have to compile up a story, up like the tenth chapter that each of the different schools had written about the topic, and we had to write the tenth chapter continuing continuing from the ninth chapter. So we had written, we had drawing and everything. um it was really interactive and i really enjoyed it wow this is amazing this is a we also have such we give the first line and the ending you all have to do it with 250 words so we also have such events so don't worry uh this develops your writing even the poetry skin how to make poetry is just in uh, in just half an hour how can you make your own poems so we will teach you that the skill of publishing the books your own books and becoming a published author at this age 
So all these workshops also will be coming up. Do stay connected. Uh, small registration charges are there. So you have to interact with your mother uh, for that um, so that we can con get connected and stay together. Yes? Yes, okay. ma'am. Okay. okay, thank you. So we can end the session. Sechini can be ended. She is also getting here. So yeah, Manjuri, you can end the session. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rachna, ma'am, for believing in us and giving me this opportunity to be a part of this wonderful event. Thank you, children, for being a part of this event. Thank you, Sachini. Without your help, it would have not been possible. The way you manage everything in this power of the moment. And I, as I said, I had the courage to move on just because you were there. So thank you from the little things, the way we planned out, everything went out meticulously. Everything could be done only because we are a team and we do it together. So that is the team spirit. And of course, Rachna, ma'am, she is our guiding force. She is always with us. And with her encouragement, with her appraisal and appreciation for all the little things we do, we can do it collaboratively as a team. And that is the beauty of our platform that is Creative Writing Modern Age. And I hope students also are benefited and they will be benefited in the future also as they will be joining in more of our programs. Thank you, dear children. Thank you once again. So Thank hope you. to Good meet night. you again. Good Thank night. You. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.